Nah, nah, I'm playing Fallout. Alright, y'all let me know when y'all ready. I'll start it. We're ready. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all see y'all ready? Ooh, ooh, excuse me. Make sure the audio is good. SpongeBob! Okay. Alright, I think we're ready. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for coming in and uh, checking us out over here at Dari After Dark. We are back again with another beautiful topic and the beautiful people that I have here today. We are addressing the topic of breaking generational curses. Uh, this is a topic that I think is one that is near and dear to me, but it's also a, a circumstance that I think needs to be not only addressed, but also... Um, something that definitely needs to be discussed and addressed in our community as well as with our people so i have a few of the patrons from last time with us as well if y'all want to introduce yourself again so that everybody knows who you are i'm starting to laugh <laughs> what what y'all doing man hey lee Hey, yo, this is Nigel. Nice to meet y'all. Artismo bread. Artismo bread? Yeah, I'm farting up the farm, bro. Got my hair. Bro? The phone mass flows, bro. Right <laughs> That's because you, you really do be eating too much fire, man. Sound down, my boy. Look. Yeah, we got Brick Squad in here. Y'all already know who Brick Squad is. We got Sax Boy on the side right there, aka Nigel. Nigel Diesel. <laughs> we got RT Smoke Bread. We got my lady Sensei in the background with the the uh cherry blossoms in the background as well as Kamari, aka the what was what was that? What was that? The Dark Knight? Kamari. Yeah. Kamari. Cam Cam, yeah. Kamari, same, same. Cam yeah, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say what I want to say. I'm gonna say what I want to say. I'm gonna say what I want to say. What was what was her what was her what was her name on the thing? She said dark. What was it? Dark what? <laughs> oh, Arkham Demon. That's what it was. <laughs> but yeah, man, we we discussing a uh, a very near and dear topic. Don't don't disrespect the homie. <laughs> I look. It was. I forgot. It was Arkham Demon. I had to. I had to sit here and think about it. But yeah, we are. We are discussing today. Our uh, one of the particular topics that I that I feel like definitely should be discussed a lot more in our generation, and it's breaking generational curses. As we all understand, we are slowly trying to reconstruct the culture and traditions that our parents have brought us up on. Not to say that some of the things that they have provided us is not factual nor is it uh something that we can use to construct our lives and guide us uh to becoming better within ourselves but as we all know there are some things that our parents and our great grandparents instilled in our 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 families as well as the traditions that were had that don't really match up you know what i'm saying so I'm asking everybody here today, we'll start out with our first question, is what does a generational curse mean, or what do you, what, how can you define what a generational curse is in your own words? And look at little eyes. That's, that's a, that's an open question to everybody, so y'all can answer. Oh, good. Habit or a or a lifestyle that is passed down um, from parent to child to parent to child. And uh, it's something that instead of 
people trying to stop it from happening when they know it's wrong. They just learn to accept it and teaching it. Cam, Cam, I thought you was about to say something. You was about to say something? I was. I was going to basically say, like, it's basically um, a negative that, basically what she just said, like, it's something that's negative that happens from generation to generation, something that uh, continuously repeats a cycle until somebody uh, steps out of that cycle of what, of the talk. Uh, yeah, like a bad habit. Okay, so like okay, so can y'all? With that being said, I'm I'm like trying to for the people who don't understand because I I have I have viewers. I just found out that I got a viewer in Denmark. I, that was that was kind of wild. But somebody watches me in Denmark, so I didn't know that. Uh, but for people who may not understand, because this is a controversial term in America, right? But for people who don't necessarily still understand what we're discussing. Can y'all give like an example of what is a generational curse like that you notice you have either adapted or has been constructed unto you from your parents and your great grandparents that you are still trying to overcome today? Toxic masculinity. Damn, that's how we go. That's how we go. <laughs> that's how we go over that. <laughs> trying to navigate um since i had a son mm. like i really started to realize how there's a certain like there's a specific way that people want you to raise your son mm. and when you don't buy by that um what a job <laughs> and if you don't go they got they got the kids, man. The kids are still up, so you you gotta you gotta buy you gotta you gotta get them some time, y'all. But when you uh when you don't raise your kids the way that well your sons, it's specifically your sons. If you don't raise them the way that um, other men want your son to be raised, then they call them like like different names or all different types of gay and all that stuff. It's so it's really really weird to me, and I'm just trying to get the out of the habit of him feeling like that if he's not this way then he's not right mm -hmm. well let, let, you know what i want to unpack that a little bit because that that is something that is a generational it is a generational curse and i understand like speaking from a man's perspective there are certain things that even my dad raised me on and my granddad raised me on that i do find toxic right mm -hmm. but there are things that I think a man is just supposed to innately have for him to be masculine. Does that make sense? And I'm pretty sure the other brothers in here can back me up on that. So I kind of want to unpack that. What are, give me like an example of what would, would clarify or would classify as toxic masculinity. Um, okay. Here goes something. Alpha versus beta. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, well, alpha male thing it's kind of oh, yeah. it's kind of dumb like I, I watched I, I did a little bit of research on it not a lot so i can't you know, speak 100 percent factual information mm -hmm. but from what i've perceived from it, it seems okay. like the term alpha isn't entirely accurate in how to determine who's above or below it's just the toxic masculinity thing essentially it's like uh the big macho dude like he you know he treats women how he wants to treat them he doesn't care how people think he does what he wants to do in a way, the negative, some people see that as good, but it is not a good trait to have, you know, not a good way to move. You know what I mean? I, I can, yeah, I can kind of, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. I think. That's the simplest thing. That's the simplest Yeah, thing okay. I, I'll come, I'll come back to that. I'm going to put, I'm going to put that in the cursor up here. We're going to come back to that. Mm -hmm. Give me, Cam Cam, give me an example. And anybody can chime in after Cam Cam, but give me an example of what you, what you define as toxic masculinity. So the um, I had the other day I was talking to my father, mm -hmm. and I was telling him about um the toys that I had bought Aj for his birthday, mm -hmm. and he obviously is into monster trucks. He's into like all the things that you people would say are boy related, right? Mm -hmm. And then I also told him that I bought him a kitchen set, 
And he was like, a kitchen set? Why? My grandson not going to play with no kitchen set. He's not gay. And I was like, he's gay because I bought him a kitchen set? Mm -hmm. I was like, do you mm -hmm. not cook? Do you not know how to feed yourself? Like, he's not allowed to play pretend and cook. Right. Okay. I can, yeah, I can, kind of, I can see that. I mean, because there are male chefs, right? The people who, right. my cousin is a is a chef, and he's he's a man, so like I I get that. That's a very yeah. Or when when uh, my parents found out that Bluey was a girl and Bluey wasn't a boy, now he can't watch Bluey no more because it's a female lead. Like it just doesn't make any. Mm. He can't watch Dora to them because Dora is for girls, and he needs to watch things that's for boys right. but if he like but dora is teaching you spanish like, <laughs> right right okay things like that just i'm like i i have to like fight for my son because i'm like dang like i'm trying to teach him in a different way like because now you know i'm in school for psychology and i'm trying to be a child psychologist and there's things that they said that you have to do for your sons and your daughters like you're you need to they're supposed to play with baby dolls and they're supposed to play pretend and they're supposed to play all these things because once they get older and because men have babies too like i don't understand why men can't play with baby dolls like they need to learn how to change a diaper and do all that stuff too because those are their babies too right so we, i'm trying to teach him like nature over nurture and all that stuff and let my parents see him playing with a baby doll oh my god you're you're raising a sissy a sissy <laughs> <laughs> but i also have him doing karate and i have him doing all that other stuff but because i have him doing some quote unquote feminine things he's gay like it's mm. just, and he's a baby you're putting sexuality on my baby he don't even know what sex he is <laughs> right yeah no i i can i can definitely agree to that there was things that and i'm pretty sure a lot of a lot of us can attest to it being a 90s kid there are certain things that and i, I think that's that and that would classify as a generational curse right there are things that have and uh uh there are things that society as well as tradition kind of derive right i mean if you if you look back even just in historical texts right the men were naturally the hunters and the the individuals who would go out and provide stink sanction as well as sanctuary for the women of the tribe right that's just a natural order of things at least from a historical standpoint right so there had to be and this is why i'm gonna come back to nigel there had to be an alpha that led the pack right there was the biggest strongest person in the tribe that would lead the rest of the men out to hunt these big gazelles and the mammoths if that if i don't believe there was people out hunting mammoths i don't that's but you get what i'm saying like there were there were individuals like the alpha that would lead the hunters into battle and they would go and find the food and find the uh the next area for sanctuary and so on and so forth uh to provide to the women of the tribe and then they would come back and mate and so on and so forth to expand the tribe right and then you had mm -hmm. the other individuals which most of the time were women and children who would go and take care of the take care of the village and they okay. would provide the things that the men weren't going to ga going to gather like the fruits and the berries and the clothing and so on and so forth right and that's just kind of been a historical societal perspective of how the man to woman relation was working right and as we've gotten more industrialized as we've gotten more technology technologically advanced we have understood that of course we no longer have to live in that perspective however as our parents and our grandparents grew up they still kind of kept some of those mentalities from the village perspective does that kind of make sense can I chime in? Yeah, yeah, of course. All right, my bad, my bad, y'all. Uh, Nunu, Nunu in the building. I forgot to introduce the Nunu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you good. Go ahead, go ahead. It's like a, it's a fun fact. Also, society fact. makes us. Uh, Did y'all know, so like, uh, I think it was things. like throughout the. I don't know if they were like the Romans or something like that, but with them, like the men would go out to war, like you know the Trojan War and all that stuff like that. Since they were gone from women for a long time, they had like younger male as their mates 
while they were out hunting. So they basically had companionship through men, had relations with men. And like you said, they'll come back home and like make more kids, but they had a woman mate and a male mate and they'll particularly take young boys and mold them into soldiers and they'll be lovers. So it'll be half and half. Yeah, that's actually yeah, it's crazy because that yeah the yeah the Spartans actually live by that. I don't, huh? You said what? She said that's a fun fact. Call it a fact. That's not. But it's it no, it makes okay. So look, so speaking from what she's speaking on, right? The Spartans actually, from what from what I've from what I've read and researched, the Spartans actually did that, right? And the reason why they did that is because. Take it, take it like this, right? If you go, if you go into war, right? Let's say it's me and like all of y'all and like me and Lady Sensei, I have to go to war, right? I would be more inclined to protect my lover that's back at home, right? But I, the more I'm in this dirt and grind, right? And I'm fighting for somebody that I don't care about next to me. The chances of like someone coming to me and telling, look, we'll keep your family alive back in wherever it is as long as you surrender right but if you have that same mentality with a person like a lover on the battlefield with you you'll be more inclined to fight so the spartans believe that if they had a lover which they did in a lot of cases they had a male lover that also served with them on the battlefield so when the battle came when when it was time to go to battle they were more inclined to protect the man next to them because they probably slept with them or had a um, emotional relationship with this individual, which means if he died, now I have to avenge him. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not fighting until the, there's literally no breath. I'm fighting until there's literally no breath in my body because not only did you take out my lover, but you're also going to go back to my home and destroy it. And my wife is there and my kids are there. You know what I'm saying? So... It's one of those weird dynamics, but it, in a way, you can see why it would work. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that you could understand why it would work. But yeah, to go back to to Nigel, we we gonna we gonna unpack that, Nigel. We gonna <laughs> we gonna unpack that. Oh, look. <laughs> what was I about to say? Oh yeah, in regards to what you were saying, so that's not a hundred percent. Every tribe, every um village you know from you know back in the day there were women hunters you know even in the animal kingdom a lot of the uh females they are the prime hunters well the male does not he's more so protecting the pride mm -hmm. so not saying what you're saying is wrong but it it's it's a little bit more to that that's the that's one side of it and there's the other side of it too i just wanted to add that no i agree in to the whole alpha male thing yeah i think i think that has been passed from generations as oh well it seems like that's the, the 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 lead of the pack essentially or this is the man in charge or this is the person in charge so they can do whatever they want they can say whatever they want and they can act however they want because they are in control of the entire situation you know they're making sure the house is taken care of they're making sure that the bills are paid they're making sure that the woman you know there's food and everything making sure that everything is sorted in that way and it's that mentality of i can do whatever i want because of it and that's where i kind of put it with the alpha and i've seen that and you've seen it in media. We've all seen it in social media. The alpha does, or the the person who claims to be an alpha, they feel like they're up here at the very top. You know, they got the pick of the litter. They do whatever they want. They act however they want to. But, you know, as it seems right now, it's kind of like backtracking where it's like, ah, that's considered toxic masculinity now. And I do agree with that because I kind of used to act similar to that in a, in a way. And I've kind of changed my uh, mindset and my views on it. And like, a, I don't know, it just from a personal standpoint, I can see how that is very toxic and not appropriate for every situation. It's the difference between being assertive and acting like, you know, for lack of a better word, an asshole, essentially. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would counter that. And I don't know if Brick want to, want to back me up on this, but I would counter that with the two things there, are, there are reasons for everything. Right. And this is the reason why I like watching Joe Rogan because he brought this up, right? There's a thing now, there's a controversial the social media thing where now people, like a lot of men are trying to be beta males, right? People are not striving to be the alpha male anymore. They're striving to be the beta male, right? And the beta male is an individual who uh, essentially doesn't live by the policies and, not, and the laws of an alpha, 
right the alpha is the one who runs the herd who runs the pack who can be assertive but also extremely aggressive the 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 moral definition of what toxic masculinity i think is what a lot of women try to um try to define as an alpha male and men are starting to strive for being the beta male which is kind of like the total opposite if if you were to put it on a scale as far as like relation that y'all can understand alpha male would be like the depiction of like the rock right the rock would be considered an alpha male even though he doesn't have the personality of one he would be the person he would be the depiction of an alpha male that is what people strive to look like and be like in in the perspective of the alpha male right and the beta would be someone like the beta male would be someone like prince or like black in in today's relation right so an individual who is who is more intact with both sides of his emotional elements who understands that there are certain things or certain ways you're supposed to treat women and certain ways that you're supposed to treat yourself but my argument right and this is me playing devil's advocate right but i'm also i'm playing devil's advocate but i also agree to some extent that there has to be alpha males there has to be a person like the special forces is a great example right the arm the military needs a special force team of individuals who can take orders don't ask questions who will get shit done and come home with as many people as possible knowing that the mission the mission is accomplished right and that's the same perspective from a societal standpoint that you need alphas you need these people who are determined to achieve a goal and change the world in a exponentially uh expansive standpoint to make the world go round right just like you need somebody to do the dirty work for other people to shine does that make sense now i understand that but the thing is that the alpha male we're not teaching the the way that toxic masculinity is coming off as it is entitlement are and it's funny because these men aren't being taught how to be men they're being taught how to be entitled they feel like they can and they must and they will and they can do whatever that they want because they are a male and i'm not saying that this is all men i'm just saying that some men are taught to be like that now like just like how my father was like, my my grandson's not gonna play with a kitchen set. My grandson's not gonna play with no dolls. My grandson's not gonna watch Dora. My grandson's not gonna do none of that stuff. But it's just like, why can't he? Mm -hmm. You know, like my dad, my dad thinks that he is the like the uh, the identification like of the best man. At, like he like I don't even know how to explain it. But like my dad don't got no fucking job. <laughs> my right. dad still uh relies on his mother to give him things my dad asks me for five dollars every single fucking day like but he feels like he's that bull yeah he feels like he that bull because he people know him on the streets or he don't take no shit mm -hmm. or you know he he can walk all over his family that's what he's trying to teach my son and that's not how i want my son to be taught like somebody should have gave you a fucking hug like, <laughs> yeah okay like, like what the hell is going on like you want me he if you if he watches my son right and my son starts crying he's gonna be like yo shut that up like you're a boy boys don't cry but boys do cry they're human yeah <laughs> yeah everybody cries they don't know how to the only way my dad knows how to uh knows how to show emotion is through anger because that's all he was taught because they were taught that you have to suppress your feelings and your emotions because that is unmanlike mm. so like that's that's what i mean by like toxic masculinity like i want an alpha male but an alpha male don't look like nothing an alpha male looks like a man who makes sure that his husband like make sure the house is good make sure his wife is good make sure his kids are good he has to be smart he has to be, you know, all these, like, all these things. And then some, he has to be sensitive, too. Men are sensitive, too. Who, so, like... Then I will ask you this question, and we'll move on to the next topic, because I don't, I don't want to forget where we are as far as what the topic is. Uh, but I will ask you this question to kind of go towards your point, and then y'all, anybody can chime in. 
then we'll move on to the next the next point um with what you just stated with men having having a a falsified understanding that there are more emotions than just anger right do you find that you can still respect a man this is the first this is the first part of the question that allows himself to show his emotions in front of you the second part of the question is if so if they come to you and decide to be vulnerable and allow themselves to be vulnerable with you do you find that this person is less of a man or do you find him more empowered as a man I, I feel more, more empowered. empowered. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Because there's it's nothing like, like man to share his feelings. Exactly. Because then you won't have to walk on eggshells or like, like one thing that I told Cam is that one thing that he does is he hides his emotions, and then I'll find him in like a a room like drinking and going through all this stuff, and I'm like, dude, what the hell? Like, what? you was just fine earlier, but he's wearing a mask all day. And then, like, once he finally is alone, he can let his emotions out because he doesn't want to show me that he's less of a man because he needs to, like, let his feelings go. Like, I would rather you just tell me, like, hey, this is what it is. This is how I'm feeling. I need a hug. I need to cry with you. This is what, you know, than to walk around on eggshells and not know what the fuck is going on in your head because niggas who suppress their feelings <laughs> bring it right. out like crazy. Right. Mel, Mel, uh, Melly, Melly put in the chat that uh, she said that men don't understand is that we want y'all to talk to us, be open, and let us let us the fuck in, right? And that's what she, that's what, uh, that's what Mel put in the chat. So I, I, I can understand that, but I think, and look, this is this is something that <laughs> I think that there are certain there are certain things that. I don't know, and that that may just be something that I have to work on, right? But I think there are I certain. I want to see from personal experience on this. There are certain things that I feel like yes, you can be vulnerable about, vulnerable about, right? There are certain things that you can be vulnerable about, but there are certain there are certain things that you're not supposed to do in front of the woman that you're with or with another person. Like that's what the homies is for. Right? You come and if I got some real shit going on, I'm really in a bad mental state. Like. The, if I want to break down, I break down in front of the homies first. You know what I'm saying? Like, I break down in front of the homies first. That's more weird because you're having an emotional connection with a man versus your partner. That's, that's my brother, though. I'm looking at them like my brother. This is my brother. I go and break down in front of him. You, this is your life partner. No. You need to be more open no. with him. So y'all can work together so you don't feel alone versus your guy no. friend. Like, your guy friends, like, no. it, it's, it's a connection because you both are male and you do understand the male struggle. Like, if you don't have that foundation I got with you, your Lou. wife, if you don't have that foundation with your wife and your lifelong partner and stuff like that, it'll cause a big division where, like, like she said, there's a whole bunch of misunderstandings and it's toxic because you always run to your male friends versus your woman. Mm. And y'all supposed to be, y'all supposed to be, you're supposed to be two different individuals, like coming as one. If you can't even be vulnerable with your woman while you with her, exactly. I got a question. Your man can't, yeah. your uh, male friends can't change how you feel about your wife. I got you, Naz. I heard. You. What's what's your question? Well, uh, before before you ask your question, Lupin said that uh, there's the rub. Many women tend to discount and write off an emotional man. Then later. They'll bring up that conversation or emotion later as a weapon to destroy him. Mm. It depends on it depends on the mm. lady. It, de it depends. Hold on, hold on. We got we got too many people. I want to hear. I want to hear from. <laughs> I want to hear from. Uh, I want to hear from. Uh, Artismo, Artismo Bread. Yo, shit, mm -hmm. muted, girl. Oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, it's not muted, but that's true, and that's why, like we're talking yeah. about toxic. Uh, masculinity. There's toxic femininity too. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Men try to weaponize their men's vulnerability mm -hmm. because they are taught gener generational curses to be evil women. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So that's how, and if that happens, leave that who. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> Nadja, what's your, what's your question? Let's see if I can remember. Uh, it was in regards to the, you know, 
why are you with somebody if you're not like wanting to be open with them? I feel like everyone has different relationships for different reasons. Not saying like mm-hmm. romantic relationships. I mean, people, you have different relationships with different people for different reasons. To expect mm-hmm. one person to be everything for you is kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I agree with Darius and say like, you know, I'll go talk to my boys about stuff I got issues with, but I will also talk to my girl about stuff I got issues with. Mm-hmm. But once my girl showed me a side, like as uh, Artismo said, you know, the toxic femininity, all right. So where else am I going to go? I'm definitely going to go to my friend. You know, you get so mm-hmm. many chances of me allowing myself to be open before you, you know, shut, before I shut down and just keep it to myself and vice versa. Yeah. It's no different than if the man doesn't make it a safe space for you. Are you going to open up every time you have an issue? Or are you going to just find someone else to vent to? Same thing applies. But mm-hmm. it also in a sense of if that, if you're my life partner or if someone is your life partner, essentially, I would hope that you know that they're willing to talk to you. And if they don't, why are you with them? I agree with that for sure. Mm-hmm. but it's also in regards to like how long have I known my friends versus how long I have known you you know most times mm-hmm. relationships aren't 20 years old but romantic relationships you know they don't start out that way they mm-hmm. usually start out you meet someone a year two three years in now you together you know you're married and everything versus I've known Darius 12 years if not more you feel me I'm going to tell him more stuff because I feel it's, a, it's, it's already a safe space that space has already been tested so I ain't I don't have to worry about that but in regards to my relationship, as soon as I open up, as you know, someone commented, now what if that just you know gets thrown back at me? You know, what if now the situation is a little more concerning? I don't know how to maneuver that, so that might be the situation for that too. There's a lot of re- different reasons why people don't express themselves in that moment, especially mm-hmm. with the toxic masculinity being taught to just suppress everything, which I was a culprit of, and I would just bottle everything up. Next thing you know, I snap as soon as something don't go the way I wanted to because I have not learned to express myself grandparents parents whatever but now i'm working on that right it's just it's a it's a step-by-step thing but that's it uh i just wanted to touch on that no you you i I do agree i do agree that's that's and that's my stipulation to the whole matter is like i I, think think that sounds yeah that stems from the toxic masculinity because like Mm. it's it's the way men are wired because you guys have so much pressure and expectations on yourself that like you say you don't feel like even though you have a comfortability with a person you know for years that you feel like the woman's gonna look down upon you and stuff like that well women we're gonna come to the man first before we go to our best friend if there's an issue because you are a rock you even though like you say you have to be strong all the time and stuff like that like when we're coming to you for a place of comfort and if you can't comfort us and like you're always being strong it's kind of like talking to a wall where we won't feel comfortable to constantly come talk to you. It's like you're discarding our feelings like we're too emotional. So mm-hmm. if there's a if there's a level of um, balance between the relationship where you're able to be vulnerable with this person and you know like um, you could be like emotional with this person. Like basically like, you know, this person's gonna keep you level-headed but also gonna meet you where you need them. Because, like, a woman needs somebody who could be vulnerable with them. Like, I'd rather confide in a partner than a friend. Because a friend, like, like you said, you can know a person for so many years. But a friend and a lover, like, you can always get another lover. You can always get another friend and stuff like that. But when you're looking for a lover, you're looking for a lifetime. A friend, it can end whenever. Same as a relationship. But when you look for a life partner, this is, like, your mate. Like, this no, is no. somebody you're not trying to give up on. No, no. The check, the check calling cap on you, man. <laughs> the chat called the cap on you. <laughs> the chat said cap. That's big cap. That's major cap. <laughs> I I don't know. I I, I do agree with y'all. Lupin Lupin asked the question: Is it us giving giving us that pressure? Uh, giving that pressure of an expectation, meaning, and I think what he's trying to ask is that. Is it us as men that are making or putting the pressure on each other that, yo, you shouldn't open up to your girl. Like, that makes you look weak. That makes you look soft. Like, if you got some real shit going on, come and talk to me first. You feel what I'm saying? I think that's what he's chiming in on. And his second question is, or, or to add to that question, or is it women and society? Because women, in a general perspective, I'm not speaking on y'all in here, but from a general perspective, most women will see that right and i've heard plenty of i've I've heard plenty of stories i've heard plenty of people go through that they will go and be like i've been with this girl for a year right and i just lost my job (laughs) yo brick you remember that shit you sent to us in chat old boy lost his job right old boy lost his job and his wife they were married his wife 
because he lost his job, decided to leave him. Now, we don't, I don't know what else was going on in their relationship. No one knows what else they had going on in their relationship. But she decided to go on a date with his friend. And now him and her, well, her and his friend are now together. And she left her friend, right? So that would be a situation where he probably didn't feel like opening up to her and telling her probably in some circumstance, and I'm using this as an example because we don't know exactly what's going on, but using that as an example, he probably didn't come to her and let her know, hey, baby, I lost my job. Or there was a situation where, like, baby, I just got to wait for me to get back on my feet. Just, you know what I'm saying? Just work with me. I promise you I'm looking for a job, right? And she decided to take it upon herself to go and get with her, get with his friend that I guess had a job. You get what I'm saying? So, a that's the hoe from the jump. That's all that was. It's, it's emotional immaturity. But, but, but he was trying to be vulnerable with emotional immaturity. Right. But he was trying to be vulnerable with her. And he was at a, he was in a situation that he had to bounce back from. And he needed support from her, just like most women need support from us. Right. From us as men. Use a different example. That's not a good one because you don't know. He could have been a deadbeat that should have been taken care of. And he <laughs> I mean, it could be that. It could be that. Uh, but just just from a general perspective, asking what Lupin is asking, right? Women put a lot of pressure on men to be the safe guy, right? When you're looking for a man, you're looking for someone that can keep you safe, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, when you get with a guy, you're looking for somebody that can provide for you right mm -hmm. okay when you get with a guy you're looking for someone that can make sure that you got everything that you need regardless of what it is making sure he gonna take care of the kids making sure he gonna take care of the household making sure he got a good paying job so that y'all can be stable right these mm -hmm. are the qualities that y'all are looking for man and plus a list of other a plethora of other things like him being six feet tall and having an eight inch dick and like 25 other odd things you know what i'm saying but you get Look, stop. Look, don't don't start that. Don't say it. <laughs> yeah, I, I get your I get your statement and stuff like that, but that goes back to like like maturity. Like hmm. this whole toxic masculinity and then toxic feminine, whatever that word is. It's all about how how far you are intel like how intelligent you are with relationships or how you handle things. Hmm. If you pick somebody who's not where like a lot of people like we talk about last uh discussion a lot of people can't meet you where you are if they haven't been in that situation or if they're not even um they have experienced something like that so that goes about your choice and partner and the the uh, choices you're going to make to make the relationship work and stuff like that but a lot of people you will know if a person can meet you where you need them based off of certain situations so i agree you can't base that off of just general things like that because, like, <laughs> that, that, I'm just saying because no, like, no, I, I feel people you. being toxic and who they are, yeah, and men or women being scared to be vulnerable with one another, but that just means that person isn't for you, or you're just not on that level with that person to be comfortable. So that means you didn't you didn't pick a better choice of a partner. Yeah, I agree. I, I Lupin Lupin still calling Cap in the chat, but we go <laughs> we don't let it go. Yeah, really. <laughs> Lupin still calling Cap in the chat, but. We, it's but I, I let Cam Cam uh Cam Cam you can real quick and then I'm a, we gonna move to the next topic because I don't want to lose what we what we got going on. Go back to like the whole breaking the generational curses because this is something that was taught. These behaviors were taught by parents mm -hmm. who also feel the same way. So you can't just be like, oh, like th that's what that's where all the breaking the curses and stuff come from. That's why I'm trying to teach my son like, hey, no, this is not how you're supposed to be. This is why I'm trying to teach myself like, no, it's not weird that a man feels this way or it's not weird that you want to like talk to. I mean, like, I, I understand like the whole like I want to talk to my friend before I talk to you type situation because women do it all the time. I call my girlfriends when uh freaking Cam's getting on my nerves and I'm like, yo, let me tell you what he did. Da, 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 da. So why is it different if a man were to do it? Mm -hmm. So be that double standard know. situation. Yeah. yeah. See, and like, I, it I mean, always I come back. It's like go to your go to your wife first, but also sometimes you don't know how to speak to them in that moment. And you have to speak to somebody else. Mm -hmm. yeah so let me I think, I think it depends on the person yeah let me let's 
we'll we'll come we'll come back we'll come back to that i don't want to lose what we what we're trying to achieve in the night mm -hmm. we'll come back to that so my two questions that i will put to y'all is the first one is do you notice others like people around you or people in social media or whatever it is you can give an example and i want you to give an example of a generational curse that you have noticed right and then the other thing to add to that question is what give us all some examples of some generational curses that you are aspiring to break i know cam cam of course presented the situation of trying to uh steer her son from toxic masculinity but let's not just focus on toxic masculinity there's so many other things that our people unfortunately have bestowed upon us as children that now have to teach other children to strive away from so the first question is do you notice other generational curses around you and then what generational curses that were bestowed upon you that you aspire to break so Ziny said that um beating beating your kids like learning to communicate <laughs> no no what you made that face for what was that what was that <laughs> Some kid need an ass whooping. I will tell. Look, somebody. Hey, I don't care who clipped this. Some of y'all kids need a whooping. Yeah, I agree. When we were kids, like beating the crap out of us for like doing something simple, like not washing the dishes. I didn't deserve that type of like. Like I stole something. Well, did, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did your mama tell you how many times your mama tell you to wash them dishes? How many times did your mama tell you to wash them dishes? Did she say? Did she say wash them dishes and then she whipped your ass? Or did she say, hey, before you go to bed, wash them dishes. Then you then you went in went into bed and all that. No, no, no. And then came back. She's like, wash them goddamn dishes. <laughs> I got a worse one. I forgot. Look, look. I got a worse one. I got a worse one. I was six, right? Six mm -hmm. or seven. And I was at an after school program from my from my, from my school. I forgot my jacket. I left my jacket. You know what happened when I got in that house? They beat the dog shit out of me. It was crazy. Wait, what happened? Whoa, wait, what? The jacket, I forgot jacket got my jacket. Away. I forgot my jacket. I walked home and they and, and I was cold. And they got so mad that I left my jacket at a place that they sent me to for after school. Uh huh. They beat my ass for it. Yeah. Your ass wasn't supposed to leave that jacket. They spent good money on that goddamn jacket. <laughs> <laughs> they spent good money on that goddamn jacket. You lift that jacket. That was a fifty dollar goddamn jacket. <laughs> what no damn five dollar jacket? Where did you get the five dollar jacket at from? Where did you get the five dollar jacket, Nigel? Who buying five dollar jackets out here? What you mean? No damn five dollar. Ain't nobody buying no damn five dollar jacket. You don't know my parents. I don't want to hear that crap. I bet your dad. I ain't never met your mama though. No, my mama, Penny Pinscher, for sure. All jokes aside, like we we definitely used to get our ass beat. Like we used to get our ass beat for things that we could have just had a conversation. It could have just mm -hmm. been a whole conversation. Like I remember, like one time I had got my ass beat because uh my sister drew on the TV and nobody knew who did it. I told her that I didn't do it. Nobody could figure out who did it. So she beat me and she beat my little sister all because she felt like it could have been one of us. And it wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. And then yeah. guilty by association. <laughs> After I got my ass beat, my sister says, oh, yeah, it was me. Do you think that my mother gave me an apology? No. She said, oh, well. I'll tell your sister about that. Yeah. I have used about the uh, RT, RT small money. You was about to say something. Uh, the, the thing is cracking up. Uh, I look like you was trying to say something. I got back hands for eating the last piece of chicken. <laughs> you took the last piece of chicken, though. Like, wait, what? What piece? Wait, wait. Which piece was it? Which, which, which? which hold on. Which piece was it, though? No wait, which piece? Do you? What? 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 That's... I'm bringing that keeper back up. You want to have that bitch? You just, you just hit me. Oh, that's chicken because I was hungry. Hey, I was hungry. Hey, every time I'm watching a metaphor, boy, I'm trying to tell you, boy. Ooh, that'll piss me off. 
got you got a list of what? I got a list of the gener uh, generational curses, like uh, examples that we can all chime in on. No, uh, stop, stop. You let me do what, what? I'm doing. You let no, me. No, 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 saying, but like you know, like to bring in the conversation because oh, a lot of us aren't. We are yeah. already starting around, so I was gonna get like a topic or like name one and go pitch in on that. Look, you, you trying, got to, one. trying to take over. Got, I got What is one. it? Forcing, especially in the black community, mm. forcing children to grow up too motherfucking fast. Yeah. Okay. That is that happens. Don't let kids be kids. It's crazy. Yeah. Amen. Look, that goes have 12, 13 kids, but the eldest daughter and the eldest son are really the parents. Exactly. Mm. I'm glad someone said it because I, I didn't feel right speaking on it. I, ain't, I, don't, got, I don't got kids. I don't want to speak on that one. So that's, that's a huge yeah. one in the book. That's that's so true. True. That goes back to what I said earlier about how I was like, I, I buy my son like kitchen sets and all that stuff, and they're like, oh, he's not supposed to have none of that. But what, or like, okay, so my son was take, I took um him on a baby prom, right? Mm -hmm. And my parents were making it like, oh, he was looking at this little girl and he, he wanted her oh so bad. Like she was so cute. Like you could tell that he's going to be, he's going to be a panty dropper. He's one. He's one years old. They sexualize him already. That's okay, okay. I think we're losing I think we're losing the point of the question though. And no no, that's fine. Give me give me an example. Well, right? I mean we can elaborate on Ivory's. Well no, I yeah, I, but the question was generational curses that you aspire to break. I think y'all y'all are just listing y'all are listing generational curses. What are y'all trying to fix in your life now? What are things that are affecting you? that you need to fix sure. i'm not saying that's not one i'm just saying what are things that you have that you have been affected by that you're trying to fix no you're good Nigel. go ahead go ahead so i like i like give me give me the way you're gonna fix it though that's what i'm saying so i'm making a change uh in my nephew's life mm. both of them, by trying to be that positive side and not that not trying to instill in them toxic masculinity so that's where I'm gonna try to make a change. I'm not gonna put my hands on them, you know what I mean? Like in a sense of like, oh, for uh, like beating them if they do something that's out of pocket or do something that's like a child what a child would do. Seen enough of that. I'm over. I don't. I got to. So that's what I'm. That's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be. You know, I got. You know, rest of my life to make sure I stand on that. I got you. Yeah, that's that's actually a really good one. I Lupin put in one that I personally agree with. That's something that I had to take time out. And Ivory, uh, Artiste Mo Money, because that's my sister as well as Nunu over here to my right, can attest to, um, is one that I've personally tried, I'm trying to break even now, um, is letting my parents run my life, even though I have my own. That is a, that is a very defining one in my life. Um, and that's not to say that my parents, I love, I love my parents. I really do. I love both my parents. They may have took us through some do some stuff but i still love them but there are things that i have personally chosen because of the influence of what they feel was the right way to go and they enforced me to do what what they wanted and it, and it has contributed to my life in a positive format in some cases but it was me doing the bidding of others not doing bidding for myself does that make sense so that is one that I, I'm still, I'm still trying to break and I have broken because I'm not in the military anymore, you know, so that's a, that's a plus, but I, that is one that I can, I can definitely agree with. It's hard, dude. That's a good one. Like, if I can add on to that, sorry, I, I, if I'm talking too much, just let me know. But no, you good, on, bro. And we'll get back to, we'll get back to Ivor. Ivor, hold that thought. What'd you say, Nigel? Um, just let me know if I'm talking too much. No, you good. Go ahead, go ahead. But when it comes to like, like I want to touch on what you said, because like you said, you got in the military because it wasn't your bidding, but it did have a benefit in your life. I feel the same way in regards to me growing up very religious. I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness, and that has influenced a lot of my thinking up until a certain age point, right? But just I don't know certain things about how I was raised and now seeing life through my own eyes. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are not necessarily as they should be, in my opinion. Mm. So, 
So I agree with like like trying to undo all of that, like all of that uh program. Indeed. Um, yeah, indeed. What was you about to say? RT small wedding? I was saying another one is toxic love. That's mm, a yeah, that's a, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, toxic I feel love that. Is the best love. Toxic love is one. It's become, it went from being, <laughs> being just, you know, like in certain communities to something that's a trend now. Mm. And that's something I think we definitely have to work on stopping. <laughs> What's that? What blue face? Yeah, and blue face. Like, you better stop or she find you. <laughs> she gonna go get my. <laughs> she gonna show up at the door. I'm, I'm gonna send Lady Sensei on her. Look, hey, look, hey, look. I'm standing in the back. Hey, Krishan's strong. She look, she look like she's strong. She's strong. <laughs> She a straight linebacker. I'ma shoot. She gonna get three hot ones. Like that shit. I'm not fighting that big bitch. Anyway, let Ivory finish. Yeah, yeah. That was it. Yeah, just break it. That's a big one. I try to work on that in my own relationship life. Trying to learn because a lot of my relationships stem that I would feed off of being argumentative, being negative, using toxic femininity. But I'm trying to work on learning how to stop that for myself so that when I have kids, I don't. <laughs> the same. Like, Nuno, why you making that face? Nuno said it's cat. Look, Nuno got that face like it's cat. Right there. We, we don't a lot of my I'm not, but now, now that I'm getting older, I'm understanding that that affects people on a different level than just the surface. That's something that follows people throughout their life. That's something that really will fuck somebody up. So, so like you should get off the chat and go look in the mirror and talk to yourself. You still do. Hey yo, hey, hey, hey yo, hey. We ain't about to. Uh, wait, no, no personal baggage. Why are we up in here? Y'all do that. Y'all do that offline. Generational curse that should be broken is like, um, like making money the root of everything. Like over it is relationships. Over personal experiences, like you put yourself back because you you're too busy chasing material instead of what is in front of you. For the love of money. Really? <laughs> <laughs> really? But yeah, I feel like I feel like money is a generational curse because you feel like if you have money, you have everything. What you do have access to a lot of things, but you you're lacking basic human decency and just being. Because you're letting that rule everything for you. I, I can kind of I can kind of agree with that. I think um, I think and Lupin, I'm I'm about to message you back. I I, I want to get my thought out first before I uh, before I transition. But that's one that I, I actually have a question about, and we'll get to that question soon. But I think money should not be the root of everything however black people fucking suck and make and i'm saying it blatantly as possible y'all suck at managing your money mm-hmm. let's just be real i'm gonna be 100 percent real y'all take it how you want to take it y'all can feel how you want to feel about it but you suck Wait, don't say black people like no this. no uh-uh I'm no cam cam out. i'm not gonna take it because can't no cam cam don't stop me <laughs> don't you stop me no, black people suck at managing their money. Black people, yes, they do, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, and I'll stand on that hill and die on it, a hundred percent. We try to show both and we don't get just to just to pause. Exactly, it's don't it don't make no sense. We gonna come back to that. We gonna we gonna come back to it. We gonna we gonna come back to it. It's okay. We gonna come back to it. <laughs> I'm telling you. With their yes, yes, a hundred percent, yes. But we'll we'll come back to it. We're gonna put a pin on it. We're gonna come right back to it. I promise you. All right. <laughs> but my next question to y'all is: Do you notice generational curses in our media? And I have examples, right? So we'll go down a list of examples. We'll start out with TV shows and media in general. And then I broke it down into culture and music. So we'll start out at, at media, and then we'll go to music, and then we'll go to our culture, right? So we'll start at media. And some of the list, some of the examples that I have here, 
right? It's that new Good Time show on Netflix, The Cosby oh. Show, Will and Jada, R. Kelly, and Cat Williams. So y'all take that, y'all take that how y'all take it, and y'all answer the question based upon <laughs> how y'all feel about it. Well, what's the question? Do you notice generational curses, or what type of generational curses do you notice in our media? Based upon um, those examples, any generational curses. The only thing I will out of all the examples that you gave, I think that R. Kelly would be like the biggest generational curse because number one, if like you went back and watched like his documentaries and stuff, like as a kid, he was sexually abused, and then him being sexually abused caused him to drop out of school, which made him illiterate, which made him like, yeah, he got into like media and all that stuff and he made millions of money but a lot of people took advantage of him because he was illiterate because he didn't know much and then because of the things that happened to him as a kid it caused him to be this person who was more so power hungry and he would prey on weaker people because that is something that happened to him and nobody was like nobody was there to protect him not even his mother and i'm pretty sure that if he told his mom what was going on and usually when it comes down to men who get sexually abused you're just like oh what you got sexually abused like especially in like the black community it's just like oh so who cares like get over it if that makes sense yeah like, no i can i from an r kelly's perspective i think there were things that happened to him like you stated earlier that definitely attributed to the things that he did right yeah. as time went on however however the 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 stuff that he knew that he was doing to like those underage kids he knew was wrong he knew there was nothing right with peeing on a 14-year-old kid. And the black community failed him 100% because they found out this was twice, right? Before he went to jail for the new sentence, he did it twice. And black the black community still supported him, listened to his music, still gave him money, went to his tours, went to all his stuff. And that's why, that's why we're having this conversation, right? It's because... Somebody could have saved R. Kelly when R. Kelly was 22 years old. It, it didn't have to be his mama. It didn't have to be his manager. It could have been a dude down the block on, on the street. Instead of dancing to his music and stepping in the name of love, they could have saved that man when he was sitting up there doing that stuff at 15, 16 years old. Because I guarantee you, stuff like that don't just start when you're a big name or a big shot, right? In the, in the industry and you making all this good money that it don't start there he was probably messing around with kids or messing around with women that was younger than him when he was 18 and they was that's 14 do you get what i'm saying that's why i said as he got older allegedly because... allegedly i'm let me put that out there because we are on live i'm gonna put allegedly in there because I, I don't want nobody to come back at me that's why i said that as he got older he learned to prey on the weaker minded people because <laughs> people who were old like people would prey on him because he was weak-minded so mm. he learned how to play that power role like i'm not saying that what he did was right and i'm and then again you're talking about the black community stood behind him black people they praise predators rather than penalizing them oh, 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 oh i don't know about that i don't know about that i don't know about that R. Kelly you. probably like the only person that people still be like, I don't know about that though. Listen, 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 listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> I have uncles, cousins, all different types of people in my family who are predators. Mm. But if I were to come to say my grandmother or my mother or somebody and say, this is what happened to me, they will say that I'm lying before they believe what this person did. Well, that's not that's not praising. Yeah, that's not praising. That's just that's just not accepting the truth. That's two different things. Praising but, and praising and allowing them to do it is totally different than I, I don't because I know who this person is, or at least I have an image of what this person is or who this person is, and not accepting that they are doing okay, something well, wrong is two different things. Praising, then I will say they would lack protection. They will, okay, that makes a little more they sense. Will freaking either like put a blind eye to it than to do something about it. If we all know that Uncle Chuck 
touches people, why are you telling me to dress differently around Uncle Chuck instead of not being around Uncle Chuck no more? Right. Like, that's stuff that, that, like, they're like, okay, so what? Our Kelly's like, who cares? Who cares? She must have wanted it. Yeah. They blame before they penalize, before they get upset with the person who was doing these things. Which is... I- you said what? What you said, Brick? That's cause Uncle Chuck was cutting that check. Hey, Uncle Chuck was hey Uncle Chuck was putting that money in, boy. Uncle Chuck take care of the rent. Look, hey, look, hey, 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 baby girl, come on over here, baby girl, I got you. <laughs> but but Lupin Lupin said it. Yeah, Lupin said denial is different than condoning behavior, and that's what I'm trying to get at. Denial denying that that person will do something like that or is doing something like that is way different than condoning it and i, I agree with you cam cam I, I i honestly do like i think people condone they will deny it because they don't want to face the fact of it do you get what i'm saying i think r kelly is one of those people that we condoned it because of what he was contributing to black culture and that's wrong do you get what i'm saying this man was doing this stuff for so long and nobody stood up or tried to get him help until it was basically over and done with. Do you get what I'm saying? Now he's sitting behind prison cells or prison bars and he could have been helped a long time ago. Do you get what I'm saying? So he was a face of the community. He was a black man for money. Exactly. That, that's all they would worry about. Exactly. Somebody representing you, but you were sick. Have y'all seen have y'all seen the good time show? Have y'all seen the good time yeah. show on uh yeah. Netflix? Five minutes of that episode. Five, five minutes of the first episode. I could not. Like they you ever seen that show um, where there was um it was a janitor in a, in the in the projects? It was like stop it was like stop motion film. It was like from way, way back in the day. I can't remember the name of it. But it was the exact same vibe I was getting from it. And that show is bad. Like oh, the PJs like, wasn't... See, the worst part of our culture yeah. is what they show in that show every day. So I think, and I, that's the thing that, that I find, that's that's the reason why I couldn't continue to watch it, right? Is that the PJs, when the PJs came out, right? I was talking about the right. PJs, yeah. When the PJs came out, that was the early... 2000s right people as like as the black community and that's why i'm gonna say what i gotta say when it comes to the finances part is that black people didn't understand that we could acclaim or we could achieve is what i should say achieve what the the things that we have today right and that's primarily due to that now every person in the world has access to technological advancements you get what i'm saying you literally carrying around a supercomputer in your pocket on a daily basis. And in the early 2000s, they didn't have that. Do you get what I'm saying? So a show like the PJs really depicted how life was for like 80% of the black community. Do you get what I'm saying? Or at least I say 70%, 70% roughly. 70% of the black community was living either in something close to the PJs or new people who were living like people in the pjs do you get what i'm saying now this new good time show that has came out on netflix and i'm not talking bad about it i'm just saying from my opinion i can't get with it is that that video or that that show is depicting something that we are far past we have surpassed that tenfold in the past 20 plus years do you get what i'm saying so like that it is not the right time nor is it depicting the right image uh for the black community at all you know what i'm saying and i think what is what is contributing to that is what i and i told <clears throat> i told lady sensei this is that i think there was a black panther movement right when the black panther movie came out it opened up our our minds in an extreme way to what it is to have black excellence in our lives like people were watching, you know, the third good Martian movies and they were watching the Malcolm X movies and they were watching the Black Messiah, Judas and the Black Messiah, sure. But when Black Panther came out, bro, when Black Panther hit the movie theaters from Marvel, when you seen a complete shift in the black community. You know what I'm saying? People wearing dreads now. 
They wearing their dashikis with pride. They listening and trying to do, uh, they're trying to be emo more emotionally intelligent. You get what I'm saying? Like that movie really changed us as, as a community, you know? So I think that is just something that I, I would, I would be able to align with more if we did more productions in that stanza rather than, uh, and I agree Lupin representation does matter. I think if we were, if they would have made the show in a format, like to reconstruct the old school 1960s good times to do something that has that message behind it, I would have received it a lot better. But I don't think it's going in the right direction. That's why I'm not going to support it. But yeah, yeah. Don't forget about the other people that I, that I, I listed here because I have the Cosby's or the Cosby Show, Will and Jada, Cat Williams. So don't forget about those. Just a question, you know, with the whole Black Panther movement. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying, how the media changed, you know, or influenced our Afro ways, but it's kind of like you ignore, like, the 70s and 80s, like, you know, the Rastafarians or Jamaicans. Oh, no, not Jamaicans at all. From the islands. No, not at all. Not at all. Bob Marley made a big influence on us as a people, but there were only certain people that were listening to Bob Marley. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There was only mm -hmm. certain people that were sitting down and actually learning to be Rastafarian. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There were only certain people that live by the hippie ways of love one another and take care of your neighbor and so on and so forth. There was only a certain amount of people who were listening to the Jimi Hendrix and, and allowing Jimi Hendrix to play those guitar riffs in their lives and, and being like, yo, we can, we can do so much better if we just love one another. But there was only a certain amount of people doing that. There wasn't... There wasn't a full movement like that. The Black Panther movie completely altered black culture on an exponential scale. And you can see that if you go and look at the shit that was being posted before the Black Panther movie came out and after you, you can definitely tell the difference. Like that movie was so impactful. White people were making fucking <laughs> y'all seen the TikToks like white people were like dressing up and doing like the black panther shit and like doing a wakanda forever like that shit impacted everybody on a grand scale i remember watching a video and then my buddy uh y'all do know y'all got the video in the uh yeah look don't be uh don't be showing look uh-uh Paul, yeah turn that off look don't be trying to get me in trouble <laughs> don't be trying to get me in trouble but y'all there was a video that i seen of this little boy and it was his birthday and his mom had got him a black panther a black panther uh action figure for his birthday right and the boy was so ecstatic about having that black panther that black panther um action figure like this little this little black boy probably don't even know who black panther is beforehand but he's seen the movie and that made him feel like he could achieve something you know what i'm saying he was so he he was so impacted by watching that movie. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's just one of those things. Like I think the world shifted when that movie came out entirely. I, I feel like I 100 percent agree with you saying, but I feel like um I, I think I was just texting you chat. But um I feel like I understand what you're coming from, like how it changed and the and the impact of it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh. Sorry. But I just feel like it wasn't to me the way I viewed it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it impacted and I mean from your perspective I see it from that way too. But I feel like it was just like um a fantasy thing for most black people, like having a super nigga on screen, like Spider Man. <laughs> I, I, I do, I do. She said a super nigga. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't as impactful for the black community like, i get what you're saying like the influence for the younger generation mm. and stuff like that but i feel like just generally speaking i just think black people just have to be like oh this dude got strength like wolverine but he a nigga that's really it that's not you didn't watch that movie the way we watched I that did. movie i did i swear nah I you ain't watch that movie the way i watched that movie man you ain't okay, watch that movie you mean different perspectives though right i mean that is true yeah and and i and no no i agree with her perspective though i think it's just what? Oh uh, yeah, bro, you gotta go, man. That's you gotta it. go. <laughs> I don't see, bro. If you right now, maybe I gotta watch it a second time. This man got a melanin shirt on, and he talking about, yo, yo, what? Man, I got this shirt on. Look, look before you see anything, I got this shirt on because I went to the African American Museum last year. All right, that's why I got this shirt on. Right? Man, so, 
You can you can talk, you can say whatever you want to talk, but at least I went there. I saw that. <laughs> I, I did that for the culture. So I want to hear that. But it took me a long time to see Black Panther though. Black Panther to me not the best film in my opinion. But again, I think it's just the black the black dude on screen with powers in my opinion. Like it didn't do nothing for me. Yo, I gotta go. Yeah. I gotta go. Nah, I'm right. <laughs> Like, I, I get what you're saying, though. I, like, 100% get what you're saying. Like, when it's the younger kids or, like, some people who, like me, I always have an image where, like, you know, like, when you're growing up, your mama wants you to look natural and embrace your naturalness and stuff like that. But it's, like, I always felt pretty with my hair straight. Not the European way, but I guess you could say, like, the way they want us to look. And to me, I felt most pretty that way. So with... Like, even seeing stuff that's empowering, like, you know, for the black image, I feel like it would, to me, it was just a fantasy movie versus, like, oh, like, black women are powerful, they're bald head. And I'm just like, oh, they can, they, they can whoop ass to spears, like, Africans and shit. Like, that's just the way I looked at it. Like, with me, I just, it never really empowered me to be, like, proud of who I am because I already know who I am, but I know what I'm comfortable with. You know what I mean? But for other people out there who do want to learn more about themselves and, you know how they give us that image about Africa being poor and shit like that. I can see why most people will get excited because, like, damn, we might really have some shit over there we don't know. We might just have some powers and technology we don't know. Like, yeah, to look at the bigger picture or look at the small details, yeah. But to me, it was just like, you know, just black people, you know, being cool. Extra, super black people. Yeah, I agree with him, bro. Friday. Shut your ass <laughs> up, nigga. <laughs> no, nah, bro. And that's that's the thing too. I will I will get back to that. I think we we have a, you know, a movie that inspired me. What's that? Movie that inspired me was uh, Django. Will Smith. It was um. Was it if you movie? say that uh, goddamn, if you say that motherfucking enslaved movie that he did just like a few uh, years ago, uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna kick uh, your ass out. I know you're talking about. He had two towers. Oh, oh Hancock. Oh. Nah, 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 nah. She said, nah, nah, nah. What inspired me was um. Wasn't even you know, that movie. Jay, he had a, Jay, he had a son with him. He had a son with him. He was like trying to like you know be a door to door salesman. He was trying. Oh, to, the movie that did uh, terrible. The the goddamn After Earth shit. After Earth it? something. No 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 no. Oh, Pursuit no, of Happiness. It ha yeah. Yeah. There we go. Pursuit of Happiness. That movie inspired me because yeah, that's that's good. Movie. That's good. Every fiber his being to make sure him and his kid made it. You yeah, know? yeah, that's good movie. So, to me, that's inspiration. You know, the way that Black Panther started, he was a bastard. You feel me? So, like, nah. He was a bastard? No, he, what? No, he wasn't. No, who no, was a bastard? Him. It was his brother. Or who, who was it? His, his cousin. He was a kid. He, he felt like he had his birthright was taken from him. So, I don't necessarily see that as a... No, the, the this, that, story, that movie is so... One of these days, we're going to sit down and watch that movie, Nigel. That movie is so fucking deep. If you really, like, sit down and, and watch, watch that movie. Again. I watch, I watch it's so a deep movies ass over movie. Over again. I'm just saying the first... Uh, hey, it pursuit of happiness for me though. What you said, no no? It covered a lot of stuff like like you said, like um rivalry between like um like entitlement or like birthright, about jealousy, about potential of being something great. I get that, but like I said, like I like you said, I'm just talking about the movement part. Like, I get the, the, the different parts and different things they were trying to cover in the movie, but like I said, I just saw it as a fantasy movie, just like uh, I saw like uh, Captain Marvel with Yo. the lady. Because, you know, they try to do like uh, feminist stuff. Like, oh, women can be powerful too and whoop ass. She just a super bad bitch. That's really it. Like, it I think I think you're missing, I think you're missing the point of the movies. That's not what the movie is about, right? Okay, well, Captain Marvel is different. Captain Marvel was a feminist, a, a feminist yeah, movement did. situation. Like that was entirely yeah. about the feminist movement. Right, but Captain Marvel is a very powerful character. We're not gonna get too deep in DC and the Marvel, but the Black Panther movie, from a from a cultural perspective, that movie tells you that two. It tells you two things, right? The first thing is is that the world of the realm of Africa, right? That regardless if we're from or not from, which I'm, I have some speculations about that, but the the realm of africa is so much more powerful if people actually gave it the time that it needed to actually strive and achieve the elements that it is able to 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 accomplish right that's the first thing the second thing is is that black panther in general is a direct representation of something that we've needed for a long time we have looked at and that's and this to go back to what you had stated before 
with your straight hair, right? You have been so deluded by Eurocentric, Eurocentric influences by thinking that you will look more appealing or you find yourself more appealing to yourself or to others by changing the way you look to look more Eurocentric based upon the things that have been provided to you. And that's another generational curse, right? Is that you will look more Eurocentric based upon the things that have been presented to you the blonde hair the straight hair the brown hair the lighter than average skin tone so on and so forth these are all things that have been passed down to us to make us feel like what we have going on with our bodies the the dreads the the nice curly hair the the being able to stand out and have our melanated skin be out in the sun so on and so forth those things have been all programmed subliminally and mentally into our mindset and that black panther mind that black panther movie came out and it told you everything about you is powerful you are able to achieve these things there are roots in the african lands that you can take and make you powerful they can keep your body uh they can keep your body um they can keep your body powerful they can keep your body uh, affluence to high nature your skin is powerful your body is powerful your mind is powerful your everything that you do the way you move the way you talk is influential on a exponential scale on an exponential scale and that movie depicted all of that and it didn't even have to say it it didn't even have to say it it just showed it to you there was that scene there was a scene when it was going into the club and they had the African flags on. The uh, Lapita Nyong'o had on the green dress. Uh, I forgot her name, but um, old girl had the red dress on, and um, Chadwick Boseman had the black suit on, right? And that's the colors of the African flag. And he was walking in up, powerful as hell. Like in in the second movie, goddamn Angela Bassett walked into the damn World Center NATO meeting and was like, "Y'all not about to do this." And she controlled the whole NATO. She was she wasn't even she wasn't taking nothing from NATO. She was she was she was there. She was a black queen sitting right there on the throne and was like, Y'all can try it if y'all want to. Y'all can try it. Y'all can come over here. Power without having like the Afro um features. Cause a lot of us aren't even pure or what we are. So you wanna take up after a different type of future that's not fully African because we're not that is true. In Africa. And that is that true. Being said, there is different race. I mean, the different images of us of lighter skin, red hair, blue eyes, straight hair, curly hair, wavy hair. So I get what you're saying. Like you know, it does, um, it does bring awareness to what we look like. But a lot of us, we can't say it's Eurocentric because honestly we they the, a lot of the stuff that they program us look like we already had that in us as is that's that's not necessarily true though that's it not necessarily though. true think it about is. think about when you walk let's let's take this for an example and then we're gonna take a quick we're gonna take a quick tan uh and then we're gonna come back because i have to use the bathroom and get another white cloth but <laughs> we're gonna take a quick tan but think about it like this right when you go into an asian wig store right you're let's let's just start there when you go into a wig store, and I'm not coming at nobody, so don't nobody at me. But when you go into a wig store, who owns the wig store? Who owns it? Who owns the wig store? Asians. Okay, there we go. Asian people own the wig store. Then you go in that wig store, and you go buy your wig, or you go buy your weave, right? And what's the top thing that they sell it? What's the top wig and we I done been in enough wig stores because I got a house full of women. I was raised around women practically most of my life. What's the top wig that they selling? Also, oh, nobody wanna answer that. They selling they selling they selling straight, wavy, Eurocentric hair. Right? And if you look on any social media app. You can look on any social media app. What is 80% of the women wearing when it comes to putting their face out, putting their name out? What's the wig they going to buy? Beyonce, they ain't buying no damn, they ain't buying no damn curl. Don't y'all start. Don't y'all lie. Don't y'all sit on here and lie. 
Y'all know damn well ain't nobody buying them waves and them curls and none of that. I'm telling you, yes they are. Man. Don't don't start. I, I've been I since 1998 until 27 years old right now. I didn't been enough wig stores and seen enough people buying wigs and weave to see what people are wearing, right? And this is coming from a man's perspective. It ain't no damn curly. Don't y'all y'all stop? Y'all stop? 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 It really is curly, man. No, it really is. Like that's like the style right now. Now, now, 2024. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. Come on, man. Come on. Y'all ain't about to do this to me. Come on. They all had curly wigs. They only had curly hair. Don't y'all. In the past, maybe like five years. Yes, I give you five years. Since when, Cam? Cam? Since when? Okay. Starting in like 2008 had to be 2008 Man. curly wigs, but it's not the kinky curly wigs. I will tell you that it's like the Brazil Brazilian curlies or the exactly. big curly hair. Like exactly. That's the only thing I will agree with you with, but I'm telling you, nobody's wearing straight hair no more. It's probably not now. Yes, a hundred percent. I will say I will agree with you. Not now, of course. I will definitely say not now, and I think that is a direct contribution of that Black Panther movie. I would I would definitely put it towards that Black Panther movie, but since I grew up in 1999, right? I was born in 1996. From 19, from me being able to see, I would say around 1999. From me being able to see and understand until now, the dynamic did not change drastically until that Black Panther movie came out. And what most women were purchasing, what most women were purchasing, were those straight straight white women or caucasian women or european women hair as straight as they can get right or they would get the blonde hair or they would get something that aligns with the eurocentric values or the eurocentric influence of a woman or what was the status quo of what a woman should look like to look attractive and impressionable in a societal standpoint until now I done been in enough wig stores. I get I can go in a wig store right now. And I, I guarantee you the first five wigs you're gonna see is wavy with straight hair, and it's gonna have blonde tips on it with brown brunette hair going down, or it's gonna be straight blonde, or it's gonna be straight brown. And then you go back to the back, they got all the braids, they got the kinky shit in the back, and then they got some of the stuff in the front. But that, that aligns with what our next topic is going to be in the next 10 minutes is what people are wearing in the rap society. Well, we're going to come back to that with our music. So but give I us some. Him. I know you feel like the natural hair movement didn't start until Black Panther, but that is so not true. Yeah. That is not Shit. true. Shit. 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 All right. When did Black Panther come out? Black Panther came out 2012. Oh, no, 2018. Yeah, 2018. Let's talk. Let's go back. It came out in 2018. You really think that nobody was having natural hair up until 2018? Brother, you can look You can look at social media, brother. Brother, I ain't got, I ain't got to lie. Brother, I ain't got to lie. What I got to lie for? There is no, no, what you, it's not that you're, lying, it's that you're not understanding what everybody else is saying. The natural hair movement, because I remember we was all cutting our hair, yeah. taking the perm out. That stuff started around 2010, 2011. Yeah. Because when I cut my hair, it was 2013. Man, I'm about to pull up. When Yo, when we come back, happened. y'all give me, y'all give us like 10 minutes. Give us 10 minutes. I appreciate everybody that's in here in the chat. Thank y'all so much for coming in, looping. Melly, uh, we had Brick making some comments. Y'all, make sure y'all turn y'all videos back on. Just give me a quick, I, I'll take five. Five minutes. Give us five minutes. We're going to come back. Everybody mute your mics if you're going to say something or do something outside of here. Uh, give us five minutes. Let me take a quick intermission and we'll come back.
Alright, alright. We should be we should be starting to get people back in here. Sorry for bothering y'all. Want to offer a promotion of your viewers? Lord have mercy. Brick man. Why you, why you ain't modding, man? <laughs> Brick supposed to be modding, man. What you doing? Uh, damn, man. <laughs> he did. Bro, what I'm paying you for, man? <laughs> Hey y'all, y'all continue, y'all continue to uh to support the stream, man. I gotta start putting my 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 mods on the payroll, man. So anything that y'all y'all can attribute to the dojo donations would be more than bountiful. Um, if y'all want to, and I also have a um I also have a thing going on my Facebook page as well for the Wounded Warriors uh program. If you want to check that out on my uh facebook it's my i'll actually post it in here but i would love for y'all to to contribute a donation to the wounded warriors program as well so i just want to put that little plug out but anything that y'all contribute to us y'all please share and subscribe as well as turn on your notifications so that i can uh start being able to actually put my mods and stuff on payroll this is a llc now and i'm trying to grow this as much as possible so any any help as far as even just following the channel and and sharing the video is more than helpful so keep that in mind i do appreciate every last one of y'all um all this is a safe space as well i should attribute that as well this is a safe space so whatever you attribute to the chat i will be reading it and voicing that into uh, our conversation as we go along so uh, please don't don't hesitate to put something in the chat and let us know how you feel about the the conversation as, as well. Yeah, I think we lost one. Yeah, uh, Ivory. And Lupin, just to answer your question, since we're we're kind of sort of still in a mission uh, or intermission, um, I will start allowing people to come in and um attribute their opinions on the topic probably in the future uh right now i'm just trying to really just trying to get the the dynamic started first before i start allowing people to actually like uh come into our you know like come into the actual stream itself uh but lupin you already know you a day one man and i appreciate all the love that you provide uh, here in the chat as well as uh, just to the, the dojo in general so uh, don't think anything that you're saying or um, anything that you're providing to us is going um, unappreciated you know what I'm saying and I, I want to say that to everybody but I do appreciate y'all I do voice acting work now and I've been in uh, been in around media a while and I've seen the BS <laughs> I want to get into voice acting man I think that'd be really dope 
and we're gonna let everybody else come back i don't know um i think we're only missing we're missing nigel i said five minutes that's that's all i said it was five minutes <laughs> y'all don't know how to tell time i said five minutes what's up you remember how you was contributing to the Black Panther topic and about like uh, white people, I don't know, black people being influenced by like the Eurocentric way? Mm -hmm. He used the men as an example too, because like as like the Jerry curl, uh, loosening their uh, curl pattern, the temptation. Yeah, the S curl, yeah. Oh no, like, yeah. Doing, yeah. Like men uh, getting their hair, you know, like Elvis's hair was done. A lot of black men were getting their hair done like that too appear more attractive as well oh yeah i agree i think but that's that's mostly what affects the african-american culture you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. like the eurocentric mindset has affected the african-american the african-american culture to a substantial amount and I, I i did my research the waves that most african-americans wear right started from a european man in the 1930s did you know that? You of, Did you know that? You think about how waves didn't start. Cool. Yeah, but waves didn't start with black folk. That wasn't a black folk thing. That was a thing that, that was done in the 1920s that women were doing. And black men, black exactly, black men popularized <laughs> that in the 1940s up. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He said it sounded like a lot like Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> But no, it's the truth. Like, there's a lot of Eurocentric mindsets that have been adapted in black culture. And I don't, people don't really understand how deep mentally Eurocentric mindsets and Eurocentric influence has affected us as black people, especially but in today's time. Can you blame time. us? Can you blame I, 100% I can. Because. 100%. Like, you have to realize yeah, that. The effects of slavery has a lot to do with that. Like colorism has a lot to do with that. Even still till this day, like I will be praised because my curl pattern is looser than somebody else's curl pattern. Like mm -hmm. somebody can come like with like 4C hair and because I have 4A, 4B, oh my God, you're so pretty. What are you mixed with? Da -da -da -da. I'm also mm -hmm. light skin. Let's put that in there. Like there's things that like, it's not i wouldn't say that it's popularized i'll say that it, here goes another generational curse these are things that was taught to us like the whiter you are the better you are the whiter you look the better you look but as time has gone on and like i said the um the natural hair movement happened now we're starting to really realize that black is beautiful like mm -hmm. black girl walk came out and that was um that was a big thing for like uh black women getting awards just for like doing cool black things like if that makes any sense like we never got praise for just doing like being us and now you see white people want to be us well it's now always we it's always been like and we have our culture and mm. stuff like that like now we're starting to really appreciate ourselves i think it was and, always been like that though i would agree or i would attest that that fact that has always been the exoticness of, and we're going to get into that when we get to culture, right? But I think that has always been like that, that we are an exotic set of people. We literally influence everything across the board. If black people don't make it cool, it's not cool. Do you hear what I'm saying? So I think we have developed a lot of things from the Eurocentric perspective, right? And we have taken it and turned it or molded it into something that we can translate into what I, it's just like a language, right? Take a language for an example, right? When you speak Spanish to somebody, right? You have to translate Spanish to a person that doesn't speak Spanish into whatever language they speak, right? So let's take English. If you speak Spanish and the person you're speaking to speak spanish you have to translate that to english right okay so if you're doing that you're gonna miss or move some words around because spanish does not equate to english you hear what i'm saying mm -hmm. okay so you have to change some words around so that the person that speaks english can understand what the hell you're talking about right and that's the same thing that we do with culture we take some things from certain places 
and subliminally we have been, we have been affected by so many things outside of our culture or the outside of the culture that we have developed since slavery right mm -hmm. to attribute to how we plan to live in society today right now some of those things have been affected us negatively and some of those things affected us or at least affected us negatively that we have turned positive but for the most part it has all been an adapted mindset that we have tried to acclaim and then shift it into a translation that fits what our culture is today does that make sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, are we going to move into the following topic? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Lupin said exactly. Black people and culture influence everything in our society today. If it's not cool in black communities and culture, it's not cool. And I agree with that 110%. Exactly. And I also feel like to say another thing on your thought, like, I feel like slavery, like, we came from Africa. When we came We don't know that, Africa, allegedly. We, we don't know that. When we came off the boat, our culture was ripped away from us. So Black American culture is something that we created as Black people. So, of course, we're going to feel like like the things that we were being taught, like, oh, straight hair is better, or this is better, or the way that this looks is better, because that was, like I said, we don't have a culture. We had to create our own culture as American people. Again, like I said, as the black as the natural hair movement happened, as like it became like, oh, hold on, we need to bring our power back. We started to wear our afros and wear our locks and wear everything that we feel like that that's who we are as black people. Because you mm -hmm. also have to realize that when you go to a job and say I go to my job like this, like they yeah. can say, oh, we don't want to hire her because her hair looks a mess. But I don't feel like my hair looks a mess. Nobody else feels like my hair looks a mess. Well, as a black, as black people, yeah. I wouldn't call my hair unprofessional, but that's what they're saying, that it's unprofessional. So we had to conform into a standard so that we can get better jobs, better, um, better opportunities. opportunities. Like we have to go into whiteness in order to thrive in America. That's, that's just the true. truth. And that is very By the way, the way we uh, communicate, the way we are image, the way we just everything. It's also allowing people to have locks if they cooking jobs. Exactly. Like for the longest, women or oh, men could not cook. Mm -hmm. What's up, chocolate? Chocolate in the building, man. I got to give chocolate a shout out, man. Much love to you, chocolate. So I, uh, yeah. So our next, our next com, our next uh, question is. Uh, what generational curses do you notice in our music? And I'll give you I give you some examples female rappers the 90s hip-hop the war on drugs Gangsta rap and R&B Over sexualizing uh, each other Okay, and what do you let's let's unpack that unpack that what do you what do you mean by just 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 bragging about things that should be private about <clears throat> Your sexual life, your sexual orientation, mm. your preference, all of that. A lot of that stuff, um, that they glorify. A lot of men and women don't have respect. They think they talk about their genitalia and that is empowering. You know, that I slept with this person, that person, or like, um, my stuff is better than yours, or you have to do this in order to be beautiful. Like, if you don't put this up there and make it smell like that you're dirty or my thing don't look as long as his or prettier than his your your stuff is little it's stupid it's so, a whole bunch of stuff that should be private so okay i think you're are you speaking from like an r&b standpoint because we know r&b singers rap. We talking about rap. We talking about rap. okay so how do you think with that with that being said how do you think rap culture or just just hip hop culture in general has either okay. either you know liberally affected us in a positive way or adapted generational curses of our people over time. No, because curses because of the way we carry ourselves, the image that we carry upon ourselves is like we just you can throw us around anywhere, like we have no type of standard that we're dirty, we're like animals, we can't carry ourselves in a professional way. Like, um, like the female rappers nowadays and stuff, like, 
You shouldn't have to give little girls the image that they have to give away their innocence in order to be something. Mel, I see you said gun violence and killing each other. Can can you unpack that? Can you elaborate? What do you mean? Because I, I can take that in so many different ways. And I mean, like, from a Candace Owens perspective, right? <laughs> and that's such a terrible person. Like, that's such a terrible way to come, come at it. But, like, you know, like, speaking to st uh, statistically, right? There hasn't been enough gun violence in our, at least statistically, and I'm not, look, I'm playing devil's advocate here, but gun violence wise, there have been more gun violence outside of our, there's been more gun violence inside of our nation from us killing each other rather than, you get what I'm saying? Like, so you have to unpack that. I need, I need a little more, I need a little more, you know what I'm saying? Chocolate said, no cap. I like when the female rappers rap about spinning on dicks and licking bars. Hey man, chocolate, chocolate be on that type of time, boy. Chocolate. It's catchy, it's catchy, it's catchy, but it's derogatory. What's she saying? My booty hole. What's she saying? My booty hole brown. She said my 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 coochie yeah, pink. My booty dance, hole brown. Right. That's crazy. Yeah, like the music is fun. You know, it's fun, but I feel like it shouldn't be something that's advertised all the time. <laughs> but the gun violence thing, the gun violence is real too, because you're promoting self hate against each other. Yeah. That's, that's a generational curse because you're giving toxic masculinity based on a man have to be stronger than the other man and show dominance. And that's only being promoted towards each other. I mean, there's other people mimicking us. Mm -hmm. but it, it's kind of, you know, that uh, gangster rap and violence. It, it started with us as an empowerment that we couldn't have some type of one up on the white people on us or people that disliked us because of the way we look. So we form something against each other and harm each other because we couldn't do nothing to them without consequences well i think i think what people tend to 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 forget about is that when it comes to music right and like i said i'm 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 primarily playing devil's advocate right is that i think people tend to forget is that there were people who made music that was strictly to empower the black people right or to empower the black culture the black movement right is that there was the Sam Cooks. There were the the Marvin Gaye's. There were the John Coltrane's. There were the Miles Davises. There was the the yeah the the BB Kings. There were the Eric B and Rakim's. There were the Commons. There were the the uh, LL Cool J. Nah 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 LL Cool J. But there were the Lauren Hills. There were the Erica Badu's. There were the the KRS ones, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that that might be way past, or way before our time. That was the Wu Tang Clan, you know what I'm saying? Like, Outcast when Outcast first first came out, you get what I'm saying? So that was music that was attributing to black culture in a positive format. But today's rap, today's culture, I think is more detrimental to black culture than it was positive does that make sense i'd like to add on that real quick darius we're about to head the food lion not right now we were like right in the middle we of this. have to why what's going on Be okay see what happened was <laughs> i left all my food at home Y'all can't pick up the food tomorrow. We 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 about to wrap up. I got I got people watching now. Y'all y'all can do that tomorrow, right? These girls trying to trying to take a food trip at ten o'clock at night. It's almost nine o'clock. Y'all trying to take a food trip? What are y'all? What are y'all trying to? What now? Like what now? You got, got the whole morning. Don't worry, about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. What were you trying to? Nigel, what were you trying to say? What was not? Yeah, thank you, Nigel. What, what were you trying to get at? Ah, music is a free form of expression. You know what I mean? And what I mean, what I mean by well, if you don't know what I mean. There's music for every type of person. And then in some ways, 
yeah, <laughs> we may see it as negative, and yeah, it may have some negative context to it, but it also could be like fighting a fire with a the fire. They hear it, and they're like, ah, maybe I shouldn't be doing this, because like, in their world, it's, it's different, but when it's like expressed or seen on the screen or, you know, they show it, now you're like, ah, yeah, I need to step away from it. It's all fantasy until it's reality type thing, you know what I mean? But it's a young image. That, that's the only thing. They, they're poisoning the young minds because a lot of people look up to these people. Like, you get good and bad from everything, though. And, that's and true. That's, so Lupin... Regardless of how we see it as good or bad, does have a consequence. And may have a positive and negative outcome. So, so Lupin... Regard, when it comes to, like... What? The free expression of music, or how music is a free expression, mm -hmm. is really up to the person and how they perceive it. Like you can take some, like you can have a crazy person take some positive shit and spin it to now it's some negative. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's vice versa. That's what I mean by that. Okay. It's all about the individual, not necessarily the person telling it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, Lupin had a question. I think for Nuno, what what's in your what's in your rotation currently? He said. He wanted to ask, do you are you listening to more of a Jone and Sizzle or are you bumping Nikki and Nikki I and Megan? So with me, with me, I have a diverse playlist. I listen to rock, pop, Korean, Chinese. I listen to whatever I feel sounds good, EDM, anything. Mm -hmm. The only thing is I have like like uh Nigel said, even though it's a form of expression and stuff like that, we all have different vibes throughout the day that you want to hear that uplift you in that moment. If you're going through something bad or you feel like, oh, right, I'm going to do some real devious stuff, I'm listening to rap music because it's going to hype me up to whoop somebody ass if I'm already mad. <laughs> if I want to just be in my slow, free form, I'm listening to some um, indie music or some rave music where I don't have to have anything that kind of controls what I feel, just something to go based off on to induce that mood I'm going through. If I'm going to something that I feel like it sounds different, to influence my mind and I want to learn something different. I listen to a foreign song where I can learn a different language. So with that being said, I'm 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 wherever I feel comfortable at. I can I can I can understand that. Lupin Lupin really wants you to answer that question, but I, I can <laughs> I will <laughs> I will I'm, if you go through my playlist I know like, I know your playlist. I know your playlist. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about to him. I'm talking about to him. If you go through my playlist seriously I'll probably have Female rappers, right? Yeah. I probably have like four Megan Thee Stallion songs, three Cardi B songs, and probably six Nicki Minaj. Everything else is foreign, EDM, or rock. And yeah. I have some male rapper songs, but like I said, it depends on my mood. 99% of the time, I'm not even going to hear it unless I'm in a mood of destruction or I want something that's going to hype me up to do something I know I'm busy doing. Now, there are songs out there, like I said, if you're in the, in the moment, you want something catchy, and you're kind of feeling like, I said, I'm going based off of my mood. If I'm in, like, a very, um, let's say, I'm in a social gathering, and they're playing, like, pop songs, like, the Sexy Red and stuff like that, based on social gatherings, I will listen to it because it's on the radio, and you're around other people is a social thing, but if I'm by myself, I don't really play it like that because it's not something that entertains me. I think what what I'm trying to get at was with the generational curses, right? To bring it back mm -hmm. to the whole the whole point of it is that the generational curse is that we tend to like we tend to put celebrities on a high platform, right? Mm -hmm. And we allow these people to attribute things to our lives that we shouldn't condone nor should we allow to influence our life to life basis do you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. there was a situation and this is news i don't i'm not so nobody come at me right but uh i think it was sexy red if i remember correctly right sexy red tried to go to a high school <laughs> right it was sexy red wasn't it yeah. sexy red tried to go to a high school and she allowed high school students to twerk in front of her, right? And on top of that, she tried to enter into the school smelling like weed, right? I mean, fumes of weed coming off of her. And she tried to enter into this high school. Now, mm -hmm. that is something that I wouldn't want my kids around. You get what I'm saying? Now, 
I may smoke weed on the outside or smoke weed on the inside, whatever it may be, but I'm not doing that in front of my kids. Do you get what I'm saying? And because of a person presenting that in a role model in a role model basis, right? That is something or somebody that I can attribute to being a representation of what I want my daughter to aspire to. And that is what I would consider a generational curse. Is that someone who lives like that, regardless of who the person she is, she may be the sweetest person or the most uh the most kind person to be around in a in a uh you know what I'm saying? She's not a bad person, is what I'm trying to get at. She may not be a bad person. Do you get what I'm saying? But there are certain people that we hold to a standard. And then we allow them to be our role models or to influence our lives. And we will hold them to that standard. And then when people come at you for being like, man, like, why are you looking at Ice Spice as somebody you want to be like in the future? And people be like, bro, like, yeah, I like Ice Spice, but I don't really feel her music. You know what I'm saying? And you like, but what is she doing to contribute to the society, especially as an African-American? right and she is she's part she's part black and part something else right what is she contributing to black culture what is she doing to break the generational curses from what it looks like she's not doing anything but making more things detrimental or negative in our society do you get that's what i'm saying thing, that's the thing though none of these people that you just put out never said that they were role models they their music is not for children they're not supposed to listen to by children. It is the parents. It is the parents' job to make sure that their children are not listening exposed to, to exposed to things like that. Children mm -hmm. should not be listening to Doja Cat or any of those, like anybody Megan who talks Megan Thee Stallion. All of them. They're not for children. They're for adult women. Mm -hmm. Now it's up for that adult woman to. Uh, like I listen to all them. I listen to all them, but let does Odge know can he recite a, a song? Does he know any of that music? No, because when I'm around my child, I listen to freaking Gracie's Corner. Okay. <laughs> Listening to things that are going to help my child do better in life. I'm watching freaking blues clues all day, even though I want to watch freaking bad. <laughs> Like, I'm not watching that stuff in front of my child. It's up to you as the parent to not expose them to stuff like that. And yeah, I will I say it. that they could get exposed to stuff like that in school and all that stuff. But for as long as I can help it, I will make sure that he is not exposed to things like that. Okay, so Naja, go ahead. Then I'll, I'll come with a rebuttal. So to both of y'all on this one, or maybe all three, I think this may be related to what Nunu said. But... In regards to the exposure, or in regards to you not exposing them to what you deem as you not wanting them to do or see at a very young age, why not take it and take it, you know, as a parent essentially? And this is just, I'm just speaking from how I see it. I'm not a parent, so I, I can't really tell y'all what to do in that regard. I don't want to come off that way. Mm -hmm. But to me, it was, to me, I would prefer to just teach my child that this is not how you have to be and this is just more so for entertainment not to be taken mm -hmm. seriously etc and yet it may they may not see it right of a way at a young age but realistically what are they going to be doing at two three years old like realistically mm -hmm. the music is only going to influence the you know 12 and up crowd you know like that's the type of people that are going to hear it and they're going to act how they want to act and yeah you can mm -hmm. say oh i'm not going to have them listen to it or i'm going to not show them or let them see it when i'm around or whatever what do Every, what does every teenager do when your parents tell them, hey, don't do that or else? You typically do it anyways just to see if they're going to, like, stand on you know, stand on business or not. I definitely yeah. did it. I feel like mm -hmm. it, then they're, then they're going to not want to go to you to make sure they understand truly. They're just going to go with what they think is accurate information, what they believe to be true, and then what typically happens from that? Teenage pregnancy, bad mm -hmm. situations, disappearances, you know, just drug od that's the type of situation and to prevent that break a generational curse instead of not showing them and exposing them to a be the source and teach them the right way to go about it and not the right you know not, not the wrong way essentially because media is always going to show the wrong way it's always going to go mm -hmm. to the extreme that we tend to take as reality and it's not the case 
like say for uh, examples how they always try to push relationships you know in certain mm -hmm. tv shows it's not reality and you know in the real world it's never like that like it's not that smooth it's not that direct it's not that you know whatever it may be it's not how they try to fluff it up so just to bring it back to reality you be the re you you explain to them what they need to you know know as far as the good the bads how to go about it and of i course. feel like that will prevent things yeah, from yeah. getting out of exactly. hand but just not yeah. saying you're not going to expose them yeah. to it that would mean you would have to be around them 24 7 for mm -hmm. as long as they decide to still be under you because you only have 18 years for that so 18 mm -hmm. they can dip out and you're out of control of what you can influence in them at that point exactly yeah, but then cool. also to that point i will say that like there is there's a time for everything my like i i would recently watched a video on tiktok in the the freaking kindergarten teacher was asking all the little kids what their favorite songs were and at, like most of them said like most of the little girls said sexy red like songs and like the little boys were like saying like other like rappers and stuff like and ellie and ellie chopper and all that stuff but it's just like why isn't nobody saying row 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 your boat like why is no one well. saying like well, it, my child to, should oh, be, my child shouldn't be listening to something like that, and they're only this age. I shouldn't have to explain to them something as big as what she's talking about to my young child who don't like they they don't know what the heck. But they only know what I show them. They only know what I teach them. So my my rebuttal to this entire situation, right? is my rebuttal to this situation would be the the understanding of how much things influence you as the parent right and the rebuttal would be that you allow yourself to listen to the sexy ribs and the megan the megan the stallions and the cardi b's and uh the trey songs and the chris browns and so on and so forth mm -hmm and you 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 will sit there and listen to this music and think that you can give your child or the kid next door or whatever it whoever it is right a direct positive understanding of what life is supposed to be but you're allowing that type of music to influence you do you get what i'm saying you are putting this person to a label or holding this person up to a standard to influence you in some form of faction, right? Mm -hmm. And and giving that person a platform to grow, right? Mm -hmm. Like the Ice Spices, the Billie Eilishes, the uh, the Megan Thee Stallions, the Cardi B's, and so on and so forth. You as an adult can understand that this person is not a role model for a child. But how is this a role model for you? Cardi B is yeah. out here. Cardi B started out as a stripper right that's how her that's how her career started she was a stripper that no, got that got with Wait. offset hold on hold on she got she was a stripper that got with offset and then got her record late or got her record deal and decided to come out with music that promoted sexuality or hypersexual content right and a music standard and then presented that to the world and that's what made her popular megan the stallion megan the stallion used to work at chili's she was a bartender at Chili's, right? And because she got some liposuction, got her ass fat, and was a little taller than most people. Now she, she was always thick. She was always thick. She was she was low key. She was low key thick. I ain't gonna say that. I ain't gonna say she wasn't thick. I'm just saying she was low key thick. And then she got the BBL done, and now she don't. What I'm okay. Uh, all right. Well, excuse my excuse my ignorance on what is done to her body. But I'm saying, right that she is an individual that shouldn't be a direct influence or a direct role model to you but hold on hold on you're telling your you're telling your people you telling yourself that she is fine to listen to because you're an adult right mm -hmm. but subliminally she is still influencing you regardless of who you put in that position right and you could take any man for an example i could put snoop dog dr dre i could put goddamn uh i could put Lil Wayne, I can I can go across the board, right? And put him in the direct influence of males. But when we're speaking on the generational curse, are these the people that you should be listening to and then saying that you plan on changing yourself 
to better yourself as an individual to hopefully inspire the child or the kid next door or whoever it is to be a better person but you're allowing this individual to influence you and telling you how to have sex telling you what's supposed to happen when you have sex like trey songs brick brought up uh, the other day that trey songs literally had a whole record on his album of him having sex you know what i'm saying this nigga is literally piping somebody down he literally piping somebody down on a record and people listening to it and you like oh this is how it's supposed to sound this is how it's supposed to be and you're allowing that to subliminally regardless if you if you think about it or not it's subliminally influencing you to think a certain way but you're trying to tell your child or the kid next door or the kids at school hey you shouldn't be out here having sex uh un uh you shouldn't be having sex uh unprotected at, at between the ages or whatever it is and when you get 18 that's when you start having sex or you should get married at the age of 21 and only be um you should only be um uh you should only be loyal to the person that you with but you listening to chris brown and chris brown piping down 15 women a day you know what i'm saying like you know like it goes back when how can that how can that work <laughs> how can that work First, it goes back to what Nigel said, because uh, Nigel was basically saying how you let it influence you, because entertainment yeah. purposes, because, uh, like, with that genre and stuff like that, it's for entertainment, and yeah. basically, you gotta have your own value before you start listening to stuff like that, but like Barry said, it's kind of hard to put people in the right direction if we were under the same type of thing, but like you said, we're kind of giving us a gateway, because we are the age of understanding like with me i don't listen to a lot of stuff and but i know who i am as a person all because i listen to something like i try to take myself from a lot of sexual music too because like whatever you listen to you can't embody whatever you listen to like if you're not even in the mood you listen to something sexual you gonna start having freaking visions of shit exactly like to it, and you're not even a sexual person exactly because they put you in the mood but with me um i think I'm just yeah. as a personal experience. Yeah, with me, since my mama sheltered me a lot and shit like that, but l luckily by her, even though I listen to a lot of rap music and shit, I ain't started doing that shit till I hit 18 by smoking and drinking, really, because my mom already, you know, instilled in me mm -hmm. that it was inappropriate, that I shouldn't be doing it, and that it makes me look less ladylike, and she didn't, you know, she didn't raise me like that. So yeah. it's just about knowing who you are as a person, be securing yourself before mm -hmm. you start listening to stuff like that too. I agree. So we'll go. Okay. Let me let me move to the next question. Wait, I'll wrap. Okay. Wait, I'm a, after wait. after you after you say what you got to say, I'm gonna wrap these two questions into it so we can move a little faster. I'm gonna wrap these two mm -hmm. questions into one, and then we'll move to the financial side. And then I have three more questions after that, so everybody knows in the chat. We got three more questions after that, and then we'll be done. So I'm going to wrap these two questions into one. We'll go into the finances, and then we have three more questions after that. So uh, hold on. Let 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 Lady Sensei say what she got to say, and then we'll come back to, we'll come back to you, uh, Nigel. So just try to remember it as, as best as possible. Okay. I guess I'm just a, a built different. I don't know. Because for me, like... I could listen to anything. It could be a music about sex, whatever. And I feel like it doesn't influence me. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I feel like it is just an inter just for entertainment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, it's what Nunu said, you got to understand your self-worth and know your values and know where you stand in life. And if you can, if someone singing a song about whatever the hell it is can easily influence you then you need to check yourself out you feel what i'm saying mm -hmm. and understand your self-worth and know your values and what you stand in life you feel what i'm saying and that is why i for me i feel like i can listen to whatever i want to it as an adult and it doesn't influence the way that i think and the way that i feel and the way that i move and want to teach my daughter exactly. you feel what i'm saying and that's just me I think y'all, like, I think y'all miss y'all misunderstanding the the it, question in general, right? About ass, but mm -hmm. I'm not gonna go to my daughters and be like, oh, let's shake some ass. Like, no, you that's know what that's I'm not what I'm saying like, either. That's not what I'm saying to, either. What I'm saying is, listen, listen to what I'm saying, right? 
regardless of how you feel about how it's influencing you just like lupin just said in the chat right mm -hmm. you regardless of how you may feel on a conscious level of how it affects mm -hmm. you right mm -hmm. you don't understand how it is affecting you on a subliminal and a subconscious level you get what i'm saying just mm -hmm. like if you take i'll take the most simplest thing in the world right the most simplest thing if someone came to you right and they told you, don't go down Blase Blase Street today, right? Let's just take that for an example. You say, don't go down Blase Blase Street today, right? You can be like, well, why Why did that person tell me not to go down Blase Blase Street? And you're going gonna to kind of run that through your head. You're like, why? Why the hell did he tell me not to go down Blase Blase Street? Well, I, I go down the street all the time. I take the same route every day. I go down the same route every day to go to whatever it is. I take the same route, right? And you go down that route because they told you not to go down it. And you go down that route and somebody either hits you with a car or a damn asteroid falls out the sky. Like, I'm just giving out crazy examples, right? But you don't realize how much that's impacted your brain. Just just a person, you playing a song and let's just take it even more simpler than that, right? You hear a song on TikTok, right? Don't that song sometimes get stuck in your head? A song yeah, on TikTok yeah. gets stuck in your head. You be like, bro, I can't not get this fucking song stuck out of my head. I don't know why this song is constantly playing in the background, but I can hear this shit. Like, I really want to. So you go and look up the song. You try to find a song. You play the song like, oh, thank God. Now I'm not hearing it no more. Right? Right? Okay, you don't realize how much that's affecting you from a subconscious level. And then you try to preach something, right? Like breaking gener generational curses, what we're talking about. You're trying to break the generational curse of what this is doing to society. Not just the sexy reds and the Megan the Stallions. I'm talking about from a, a, a deeper standpoint from all the stuff that has stemmed from where the sexy reds and stuff stem from today. Do you get what I'm saying? Sexy Red didn't get... Sexy Red didn't become Sexy Red because that's who she was. Do you get what I'm saying? Sexy Red got that from Lil' Kim and Trina and goddamn uh, uh, Coco Jones and all them. Foxy Brown. She ain't get that. She ain't, get, she ain't just become Sexy Red because of Sexy Red. Sexy Red became that because there were 15 other women that acted like that and turned her into what she was today. And she thinks that's her. But it's not. You get what I'm saying? Just like Lil' Kim or Trina. You could put anybody in that position. Those things became, those people became those people because they seen somebody acting like that around them. And that's what the generational curse kind of to tie back that into, right? That's where it comes from. That's where it stems from. And that's why I said that you should not expose your children to stuff like that until they are at the mindset where they understand that this is something like till you can dis differentiate what they're doing knowing that like Ziny said and like Nigel said that this is for entertainment purposes only like I can listen to that stuff because I'm grown and I know that like first off I got a man if I want to listen to something talk about some sucking dick or whatever whatever <laughs> I can do that I'm grown yeah yeah. I'm grown, but my kid is. I'm not going to expose them to something like that because that's not something our children, a child, should be listening to. And these people don't market themselves as role models. Never did I hear um, Cardi B say I marketed towards children or this or that. None of these rappers are marketed towards children. Their parents are allowing them to listen to these songs because they feel like it's right. I think my question is I think what y'all are missing is that the question is should you be should you be exposing yourself to something like that regardless if you're yes. the parent or not regardless if you're the daughter or not because of you trying to break generational curses you don't want to see your daughter or you don't want to see your daughter twerking at 16 at the prom twerking on some random you dude you get what i'm saying you don't want to see you don't want to see your son grabbing some grabbing some chick at the prom and trying to take her to the back and trying to fuck with no condom. You feel what I'm saying? What I'm asking is, should you be exposing yourself to that type of stuff? Is what I'm asking. 
because you're trying to yep. set apart and be the person that breaks the curse right that's yep. the whole you point of the, that's the whole point of the topic so because you listen to that regardless you take all the other shit away right take all that other shit aside put it all on the side should you be the person exposing yourself regardless if you're an adult or not you know it's fucking wrong you know somebody shouldn't be talking like that in a rap song you know somebody shouldn't be talking like that in a movie you know you shouldn't be watching somebody having sex on screen you get what i'm saying like that these are things that you innately know that you shouldn't be exposing yourself to but yet you still do it and regardless if you're an adult or not hold on regardless if you're an adult or not should you be exposing yourself to it to thus say you're trying to break a generational curse is what I'm getting at. That's my question. If I may, I would say yes a million times over. And the main mm -hmm. reason for that is how do you understand anything without exposing yourself to it? If you don't go to school to learn, how are you going to understand whatever you're going to school for, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing. It's just learning how to handle the situation. So how do you counter a sexy red type of uh, situation without knowing who Sexy Red is or knowing about Sexy Red or knowing how her music is. If you never heard a lick of her music, how can you give an opinion on what is good or bad in that, re in that regard? Right. And that's just my opinion on it. Like, I think that life is about experience and experience means you have to go out and then do something or something has to come to you for you in order to, it has to be new for it to be for you to experience something. I don't know. I'm like, I'm trying to make sure my words make sense. But basically, yeah, yeah. life is about the experience, about the journey, right? So you're going to see all these different things. It's going to change you over time. So you're going to expose yourself to the good and the bad. And you have to. There has to be a balance to it. If you just only focus on what you deem as good, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily good. And what I wanted to ask you was what you had mentioned before. Like, what inherently makes those bad? Is it a society thing? Is it a personal thing? Or is it just what you deem as like 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 what what's your reasoning for why it is not okay because that's what you use as your example right like uh watching people have sex live on, on like plenty of movies for many many years they are perfectly fine with them having sometimes having sex on screen so right where is the problem if that's been a consistent thing so is it just you personally don't agree with it or is it that's the only one that's the last one i remember that's the only reason why i'm using that as an example right yeah but the other two that you mentioned to me is the same situation is that your personal beliefs is that what you feel is cursing our culture or just people in general like like what's your opinion on that one because to me you kind of have to know what is good and bad out there in order to know which way to move okay. if you only stay in one lane it doesn't mean you're right you could be wrong the entire time thinking you're right because you don't mm -hmm. you haven't been exposed to a different perspective right so exposure isn't 100 percent necessary in my opinion no, I and I I I, I do partially agree with everything that you said. Like I think it's uh, it's one of those things. Like you have to you have to take into account of the things that you're exposing yourself to, and like I said, subconsciously you don't realize how much it influences you. And when you go to tell your child to do or to not to do certain things, that is playing in the back of your mind, regardless if you think about it or not, right? Because it's a subconscious yes. situation. You know what I'm saying? So, right. it, come on. I wanted to say something about that. I'm not trying to interrupt you, but no, you could. You I could. Go ahead. Wanted to say something about that. And what no, you, you could. Said. Like, yeah, it, it really does boil down to who you are as a person. So, like, if you're if you listen to nothing but church songs, but you're a narcissistic, you know, person, your child is going to get the bright end of your, you know, of your spiel, regardless of what you're listening to, right? You listen to nothing but, you know. You've been raised in a religion. You've been raised this way, but yeah, you have bad values. So what are it's going to get you know exposed to your children? Those same bad values, unless you yeah. fix them. You no, I agree. I agree. To but death metal, listen to like whatever you know, whatever as we deem bad mm -hmm. you know, or not acceptable, right? And then be the nicest person on the planet. No one hates you. No one thinks you're you know. No one's like trying to get get you know get over on you. Anything like that. Like they don't deem you in the category of your, you know, someone to stay away from. So I really don't think that has anything to do with it in regards to it. But at the end of the day, regardless if I let music influence me or you don't let music influence you or, or however you move, right? When it comes to your children, you are the last line of defense in how that child 
take information. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they may have a teacher, they have a mentor, they may have a friend, but if they trust you and you're that safe space, you are the last line of defense. So you are mm-hmm. in control regardless. Like if that child, if, if you've never, if that child has not um, been numb to like say violent movies or things like that, but they get to school and they finally get exposed to that without their consent, like maybe there's a movie playing. They didn't know it was a movie that they, you know, weren't familiar with. They didn't think it was going to be bad because school inherently is supposed to be safe, right? right. Like that, it's a movie about catching an STD. Like, uh, what's the right. name of that movie? Um, Outbreak, or, mm-hmm. or um, Contagion, or whatever, whatever movie like that. Movies where you're not expecting to see that in a school setting, but you do, right? Mm-hmm. So you're not trying to expose your child, and he get and they get exposed to something. Boom, out of nowhere. And now you have yeah. to now do uh, damage uh, damage repair, or you have to damage control, basically, mm-hmm. to kind of mm-hmm. mitigate how that may affect them because you didn't already do that. That's why I was right. saying you should, or in my mind, I would expose them to a, you know at a point to you know gradually, not like you know throwing them out to the wolves or throwing them out in the ocean and of make course. them swim. You know, of course, like that. That's why I gradually, said. of course. Of course, and that's why I said that there is a t- like there's a time for everyone to do like there's a time for things to get taught to them. I do mm-hmm. not feel like these like these rappers and all that stuff. The things that these kids are listening to should be exposed to them mm-hmm. as little five or you know year olds. Like they shouldn't be listening or watching any of this stuff at this young age. They should be learning their ABCs and freaking no, no, learning no. And colors and numbers and all that stuff. Like. That's what they're supposed to be doing right now. Now, if they get older and they start, you know, like, I'll say, like, 12, 11, 12 is when I got exposed to what sex is and all that stuff. And my mom sat me down and she told me about all the things that happens during this time. Then that's when you, you know, you start giving them little bits, like, not little bits and pieces, but just don't, you're not supposed to, they're not supposed to be as exposed as they are right now. Right. Like, I just feel like they can just go on the internet and just find anything. Like, and I, I like, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, go ahead. I think that's a, it's a blessing and a curse for sure, but I think that the way uh, technology is now and the access to information, again, I think exposure is, like, power. That's why we have so many young children, even, doing very well financially sorry i was going to another topic there but doing yeah. so well no you're good you're good like they're, they're like 18 years old they already got a, a million dollar mansion because they cre- they created something at 14 that mm-hmm. now their family is set for life so the yeah. access to information there's always a positive and a negative and again it really boils down to how that child is raised what that yeah. child not the, not what the child is exposed to but who the parents are who's the important that's people that that child listens to or even talks to and gets information from in that regard right. the teacher true. can give them bad information and if you're not in their life trying to help them learn what is right and wrong they will go and find it themselves so that's what that's i mean true. by that like if you don't do the exposure they will find someone else or the exposure will find them and then they'll have someone else to talk to before they even get a chance to speak to you about it yeah. and then especially back to the breaking generational curses the toxic you know parenting even right yeah oh i go talk to my parents about something that didn't make sense to me that i you know found out in school from either a classmate a teacher i overheard a conversation by whatever it may be right and now mm-hmm. i get the third degree and now i don't even want to talk to them even yeah. you know moving forward ever again in regards yeah. to any concerns i had so it, it really is there's a, there's a lot of different things to take apart and that's it in that but yeah, I really feel right. like to, to really break that generational curse is what you're asking. Like, should you expose? Yes, the exposure is key. Because if you don't know, if your perspective is not able to change, there will be no change. If you believe that rich people are this and that and poor people are this and that, but the reality is it can be like really bad people that are rich and really good people that are poor. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. It changes so I, much I, if your perspective I, changes. But you have to expose yourself to let the perspective change. Of that's course, all the reason. I, that's I all I'm saying. I still stand on it. It matters the age. Like, I think that our kids shouldn't be exposed to things like that, like sexual or anything like that at the age that they are. I feel like their innocence should be um, protected. protected for as long as it can be. But, you know, of course, you know, they go to school, they learn new stuff. They come if they come to me and say, hey, mom, what is this? Da, 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 I agree with you on that. But I really want to protect my child and keep him a child for as long as I can. That's fair. That's fair. It's just I see I think what Nigel's trying to say is that like 
with your stuff you're saying, uh, Cam, is very valid. Like, their innocence should not be tainted yet. But he's just saying, like, from what I'm understanding, because mm-hmm. I am a person who inflicted on other kids based off what happened to me. If I had that protection and that uh, teaching, I probably wouldn't have um, basically uh, what was I say? Uh, reenacted a lot of things that were done to me to other kids if my mom sat me down firsthand mm-hmm. to keep exposure from happening. If something didn't happen to me where I was exposed to see something that was adult-like, I never, you know, try to process it myself because mm-hmm. I was traumatized and I understand what was happening. I wouldn't have to keep mimicking on other kids. You know what I mean? Of course. Of course. I think that's what he's trying to say. He's just saying you got to nip it in the bud where it's a level of comfortableness and you have to have that conversation where they understand from both uh, point of views. And it's kind of like, it's kind of for that kid to kind of learn, but they still have that safe place where they'll go to mom or dad before going to peers yeah. and it gets worse over time. Cause that's basically what happens. Yeah. And I agree. Yeah. I agree. Okay. I agree. Now, let me, let me, let me stop it real quick. These are all mm-hmm. valid points. I appreciate all y'all. I don't want y'all to understand that I'm, I'm here to, uh, define a, a specific source or a specific standpoint. I agree with y'all in a lot of circumstances. I'm more so of here to be the uh, to be the devil's advocate, right? I'm here to I'm here to industrialize a different mindset of thinking. You get what I'm saying, and that's the role that I'm playing. So, uh, just just keep that in mind as we go along. But I will wrap these two in a um, in a question so we can move further along because we're already at two hours and thirty minutes. So let me go ahead and, and wrap these into one question so we can we can uh, keep it moving. Um, our culture. What is black culture? All right. And I have some examples here. Uh, and the second question is our language. Should we be able to use the N word meaning nigga? And should we be able or should we be able to call each other derog- the derogatory terms like the B word as in bitch? So. Those are the two questions that I'm asking. What is black culture? Is the first question. And should we be able to call people nigger? And should we be able to call people the derogatory words? Or I would define as derogatory words, meaning the word bitch. I'll speak on the derogatory. I think okay. it's all about intent. If it comes off as malicious, then yeah, not. Nah, no matter what should not be really said, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But if it's more of like camaraderie or just, you know, you know, like friendliness, I don't really think it matters. It's all about like tone, like how you how you say it versus what you say. You know, that does have a factor in it because you could say some very demeaning shit, but then it, none of the wording was very like putting you know putting you down. It's just tone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's my opinion on that one. As far as black culture, um, I'll let someone else speak on that one. Well, what do you define as black culture? What do you feel like defines black culture? What is what makes us yeah. black? What what makes us feel like we are because we we've taken people take so much from us, but we still can yet to define what we are as a people. So what is what what makes us us? What makes us what makes this this melanin beautiful? Do you feel what I'm saying? I can tell you. I can tell you, you ain't gonna like it though. What? what? Go ahead. I, I ain't type person. I don't tear us down. But black culture to me based off go- growing up around white kids and then be exposed to black kids and seeing how everybody's wired differently. Black culture to me is glorifying. It's glorifying things we don't. It is true. I'm sorry. It's glorifying ignorance. I wanted to better ourselves. Wanted to better ourselves. Brick, bring your camera back, nigga. And we keep, and we keep thriving off of we basically bond with each other through traumas, if you want to be real. Mm. When you make a friendship with a black girl, it's always something going on at home or something that we were seeing firsthand as children and mm-hmm. we grew up into that lifestyle mm-hmm. through our parents, like our, let's say our uncles and stuff like that, that were alcoholics. Mm-hmm. So older, even though they're telling us you shouldn't do this, we're being exposed to it and then we get older, we end up doing it because it's a trauma thing. It's a, it's a trauma bond. Mm-hmm. We grew up around our parents that tell us, like, for uh, my family, they didn't let us cuss or call each other's our name. We couldn't, like, a lot of uh, black families, because.
saying liar because liar was a cuss word and stuff like that. So it's it's basically based off of trauma bonds, ignorance that was glorified because that's all that we knew and that's what we made of our culture. And if mm. we go around other people talking the way we talk, we sound very uneducated and that we don't want nothing better for ourselves. We like thriving in negative energy. Mm. And using the words that we use, even though we use it for empowerment, because it was used against us and now we're trying to use it where it's a social thing and stuff like that. It's still a traumatic experience that we all are trying to bond with rather than trying to find a way to better ourselves and communicate better with each other and build each other self up, ourselves up. See, Lupin, Lupin, I, I get where you're coming from, Lupin, but I, I honestly agree with Nuno. And that's that's crazy. This is the first time that I've agreed with Nuno is that our our culture tends to depict something that we don't take the time out to actually fully understand what the fuck we have actually put ourselves into. You know what I'm saying? So Nunu, I will say I actually agree with you in this particular circumstance, which is odd. I it's, it's been a long time since we actually aligned, but I actually agree with Nunu. I, I want to hear something from Brick. Brick hasn't said anything the whole time, and I want to hear what you think. What What do you define as black culture, Brick? Because I haven't heard from Brick in a long ass time. So, what do you, what do you define as black culture? The color of my skin. <laughs> I mean, okay, okay. I mean, I'll take it. I'll take it. That's fine. I'll take it. The color of my skin. But what else? You got you got something else to add to that? It's just the it's just the color of your skin. That melanin, huh? That's it. That's it. The melanated. <laughs> I'll take it if that's if that's all you're gonna give. I'll take it. All right. What you what you got, Cam? Cam. Of course, I always got an opinion. Like I said earlier, us as Black Americans, we have to create our own culture. Like we don't have like a set culture that we got from that was passed down from generation to generations or whatever. We're still trying to figure that shit out now. For bitch, I will say that we as women took that word back and like he like um Nigel said, you um it's all about intentions. Like I'll be like, Thank you, bitch. Let me fucking tell you what the hell happened. And she'd be like, bitch, what? Like that's a whole different it's all about how you say it, whatever. And I can also be like, bitch, get the fuck out of my face. And she's like, Who the fuck are you calling a bitch? Like it could all be used differently. Same with nigga. And then I feel like whenever I hear y'all talk about, like, blackness, it just, y'all think of, like, the negatives. Like, there's so much positive that comes with blackness. Like, I think our, our culture, we fought for a lot of things that we have right now. Like, what are, what is happening? What is going on? <laughs> like, there's so much good in the black community. Like, like I said, a part of our culture, we got the freaking, uh, the freaking, is it called the civil rights movement? We got the civil yeah. rights movement. We got, like, all these, like, people who empower us. That's all a part of our culture. Like, we literally fought for our freedom. Why, Aj? Is, I guess, I guess it's one of those things, like, I think people can't get to the, can't yet define what black black excellence is or what black culture is because we still so we still well i think it's one of those things like we still can't define what black culture is to us because it's a ever-evolving culture you know what i'm saying it's constantly evolving so it's it's difficult to kind of put labels onto something that is constantly changing you know what i'm saying however however there are certain things that define what black is. Do you know what I'm saying? There are certain things that naturally just label us as black. Do you know what I'm saying? Rodney King, God, you know, God rest his soul, but Rodney King is a great example of what black is. Black is a person, black is a person that's riding down the street and getting assaulted by five or six different police squad cars in the middle of California and being beat senseless and then being able to win the case two years from now. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
black is one of those things though black is a situation oh where you are hated across a nation oh my god black is hated you are hated across a nation and you're still able to thrive and make yourself into a a a tycoon in your environment you get what i'm saying you are able to take the atrocities you are able to take the atrocities that have happened to your people and able to to congrude it into something that is so substantial that no one can stop i guarantee you most of y'all don't even know the richest black man in america do y'all know his name Shut your ass up, nigga. <laughs> what? Who's the richest black man in America? I don't know. I don't even know who the richest white man in America. Somebody, is. somebody in chat, tell me who the richest black man in America. I, I won't wait, but somebody put it in chat. Who is the richest black man in America? I'm gonna tell y'all, but I would love to see if somebody knows it in chat. The richest black man in America is Robert F. Smith, right? He is a black entrepreneur that started that started his his uh his wealth in hedge funds, right? He is the black American tycoon next to Tyler Perry, which Tyler Perry, thank you, Lupin. I'm glad you know. But Tyler Perry Tyler Perry is the second richest black man in America, right? Actually I think I think I think I think I think Tyler Perry beats no, no, I think I think Robert F. Smith is still Robert. Who is that? Who is that? I can't see. Who is that? It says Aliko. The guy. I don't know how the hell. No, nah, that that nigga's not Nigerian. That's that's not that's not black. <laughs> that's not black. That nigga Nigerian. That's that's he may be Nigerian American. I'm talking about black, straight from like the gutters of America, and built his wealth up. Do you get what I'm saying? Robert F. Smith is the richest black man in America. Yeah, Robert F. Smith is the richest black man in America, right? And this this will kind of segue into the finance thing, but Robert F. Smith is the richest black man in America next to Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is the second richest black man in America. And we take our understanding of how to take something so fucking bad like literally black people can't go nowhere and not be hated on but there's so many there's so many black people there's so much of the black culture that will be influenced and appropriated to make other people look good in some form or fashion or they will actually appreciate black culture and try to do something good with it within what it is right and we can name a shit ton of names that people have either appropriated or appreciated our culture and turned it into something magnificent for who they are and what they are. However, the thing is still at the end of the day is that black culture is one of those things like you can define, right? But at the end of the day that we as black people in America have so much, so many things that we attribute to the world and to what it is and we have made a label off of the things that set us back and make it for what it is but then again i will say that i am playing the devil's advocate right i think somebody that y'all don't realize or don't understand is a monumental person in history uh the lady by the name of sarah bartman and i think that contributes to what we was talking about earlier with rap music right Sarah Bartman was a person from, she was a slave. I don't know if y'all know who she is, but she was a slave with a big ass booty. And she had really nice, she had a really nice shape, right? And she was shown in the Smith in the Smithsonian for a, a certain time period. But she was, she was basically raped during the 19th century. She was put into freak shows. Like, this woman was the depiction of what a black woman is, and she was seen as exotic, right? And I think what black women fin what black women fail to realize is that this woman was idolized for her bodily complexion or her bodily standards, right? And you allow yourselves to give people who are not black, even in black culture in general, and you allow yourselves to give free sexual content to people outside of black culture 
and this woman suffered for y'all and allowed y'all to be in the position that y'all are in today and that is one of those generational curses that i think and y'all should do some research on sarah bartman she is a very interesting character when you actually do some research and figure out who she is but this is one of those things that i think has to be broken right that a lot of the the stuff that we advertise to other people outside of our culture outside of our households ourselves is one of those things that i think should take a standpoint in trying to reaffirm what generational curses need to be broken you know what i'm saying but uh unless someone else needs to contribute to that i, I will move to our next question so we can we can kind of get this wrapped up uh financially what are some things you are changing to improve financially what are some things that you are changing to improve your power in a capitalistic society that's comfortability have something where it's not it's not consuming you entirely but to have some type of leverage to have enough to spend but you're kind of Kind of like you're not trying to let money control you, but you are in a state of being comfortable and you're able to use that in a way of, like I said earlier, capturing the moment, but you're not letting those things like, you know, take over from personal experiences, like growing up in a person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to talk about the finances. <laughs> no comment. No comment. <laughs> I knew the women would stay away from the finances, boy. I knew it. I, that's why I put it in here. Why y'all don't want to talk about the finances? The only thing that I will say that I'm no. Okay, never mind. No. Y'all, y'all don't want to comment on the finances. No. no. The only mm. thing that I is that I I have realized like. Is that my kid? Yeah, that's odd. Just go check on him. Yeah. <laughs> but, um. I like how y'all got the background set. Y'all got the cherry blossoms in the black. Y'all got my picture in the background. Uh, look at that. That's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the thing that I will say is that I have realized that our parents didn't really give us, um, uh, like, the tools to be adults, if that makes any sense. So, like, I feel like our parents just threw us to the wolves, didn't teach us credit, didn't teach us anything on how to, like, really um, thrive, honestly. Mm -hmm. So, like, the things that I'm doing to attribute that is Aj has his own bank account. Um, oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. For me. I put money aside for him, whether it's $40, $30, $20, whatever I can, every two weeks in his account. So that by the time he's 21, that he can have this account. But it comes with a lot of things before he gets this account. I'm also trying to teach him how to spend money and save money. Like, I, he's, not, not at, he's not at the age yet, so I'm not doing this yet, but I will do this, where I will buy snacks, right? Mm -hmm. And there, there will be the cheap snacks and there will be the expensive snack mm -hmm. and the money that he will get will be from the chores that he does in the house so he will learn that okay if i save up this amount of money i can get this big snack at the top shelf but also if i have just this little bit i can also get the lesser thing but you know he will always thrive for the better snacks mm -hmm. so that's going to teach him like how to save and it's going to teach him how to like you know, like those, how to um, work hard to get things that he wants. And then um, another thing that I'm going to do is before I hand over the bank account is that I want him to look for the apartment, have like get a job, like save up his own money for like to move out and have his apartment. And then once he gets into his apartment, I just drop that fucking account on him and be like, here you go. You've done everything that you needed to do so i know that with this money you're not just going to spend it on stupid stuff like i know that you're financially responsible and i've raised you 
to really think about what you're doing with money because I wasn't raised like that. My mom just taught me to just spend my money. And if I get credit card debt, it is what it is. Tell them niggas to just stop calling me. Like put put scam hey. money. <laughs> I think you know? I think yeah, and I would I will attest to that. I think it's it's a situation where what the fuck Naja go? But anyways <laughs> I think it's one of those things like I, I do agree I do agree with you like it's uh our families did not give us the blueprint but the thing is is like how can someone this is the the example that I give to everybody right when we get to talking about especially like finances right if you tell a person to go into a library and find a book about horses right they're going to bring you back 500 books about horses I'm like that's not the horse that I wanted to talk about. I wanted a horse. And like, what the fuck are you talking about? I want you said find a book in the library about horses. I'm like, no, bro. What I meant was find me a book about white stallions, right? I'm like, oh, okay, that's what you meant. Okay, well, let me go and find this book about white stallions. And then that that 500 stack of books turns into like 25, right? Okay, so. You, I guess you have to understand, and this is this is why I give my parents some grace, right? Is that my parents didn't have the ability that we have today to really hone down or hone into the, the understanding of there's a certain place where you're supposed to achieve this information or a certain place where you're supposed to find this information. You get what I'm saying? And we as as a newer generation with the access to technological advancements can go and access the information to give us the the leg up and making us more financially sound do you get what i'm saying so with that being said the right i guarantee you 70 percent of the people who's probably going to watch this video or has watched this video when it posts or even the people in this chat I guarantee you, most of y'all don't even know half of the shit that you need to know about life insurance. I do. You, yeah, I will. I will probably say you do. I, I, I will attest to that. You, you, you probably know some shit about life insurance. Do you know what I'm saying? But do you know the difference between a cash value life insurance plan, a term life insurance plan, and a whole life life insurance plan? I actually do, only because I had to study that. Exactly. Right. But most African-American people don't even know that the reason why the Rockefeller family is still where it is today, right? The Ford family is where it is today. The Biden family is where it is today. The I can go down the list. The Bush administration or the Bush family is where it is today. The Jeff Bezos family. Bro, there's a list. Because people don't understand that most of these most most of the I, I was about to say MFs, but <laughs> most of these people who have the information and have the the reason that they are still in power today is because they knew the difference between putting money in certain places and saving money in certain places so that they can attribute to where they are in a certain circumstance of power that they have today. Do you hear what I'm saying? There are certain things that we have the knowledge and as well as the perspective on how to improve ourselves as a society right like lupin has stated before 70 percent of the do the black dollar doesn't even circulate in the black co black community right 70 percent we are the biggest attributors right as black families we are the biggest attributors to society but half of that money doesn't even circulate in our fucking community, right? Okay, so if that's the case, how do we ever expect to get from taking pennies and nickels to having dollars behind our names? Do you get what I'm saying? That don't even make sense. You 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 literally saving pennies and fucking nickels, but you giving dollars to everybody else. How 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 will you ever get out of the situation? of trying to make yourself a bigger person in society if you're giving everybody else your dollars and only keeping the pennies and nickels you get what i'm saying do you see how you gave yourself that knowledge of how to be financially responsible now you will give your children 
that knowledge of how to be right financially uh, aware, and then it will go so on and so forth. So you knowing all this stuff is breaking that financial co- uh, that yeah. generational curse, and that's what I'm yeah. gonna do for my kid, and that's sure. what my kid is gonna do for his kids. Like our parents didn't really understand that stuff because what they were taught back in the day was that okay this money comes in you have to pay for this you got to pay for that you live within your means like mm-hmm. um, they didn't really know about savings and 401ks and all that stuff they don't care they didn't care about that stuff they only like you had all this goes back again to slavery time where the reason why we spend money to like flash on each other is because back in slavery days you know if you were you you had to be the the nicest looking one and you know everybody need to look at you and be envious and jealous of you that's all they know is just to flaunt their wealth or flaunt what the little wealth that they have well we exactly. we don't we don't really we don't they were flexing on field niggas they was like we in air conditioning well yeah I about to say yeah we don't we don't really know that we we only take it from what white people have told us and that's that's being that's being that's extremely true. direct we only know from white people have told us. We don't know if there was an actual situation of house nigga to field nigga, right? We only know that there was niggas. That's that's it. That's the only understanding we have. There was niggas, right? And there was niggas working in certain places. We don't know if there was a depiction of house nigga to field nigga. That's just something that has been passed from a. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm trying I'm trying to get back to the the situation of financial financial understanding right financial like that all that stuff is a whole nother conversation what i'm saying is that you learning all this stuff is going to eventually break that generational curse we are we're trying to figure out how finances work i think the first time i even heard anything about finances was from my uh my american history teacher he told me all about credit and all that stuff and that's not even what the the class was about like my my mom never taught me about interest and all that stuff and don't take out a credit card or this or that that's like you know that's not something that they cared about money is like you want to have the most money but then like spend it at the same time so yeah like i said we we're going to break that curse but you know going back they don't they never cared about that stuff we care about that stuff now because i don't be I, I don't i don't know i think our parents did and that's that's the thing it's like i think you have to show your parents some grace right we have such access we have such an abundant access to those to those things now i don't think and i i will i will attribute that my parents had that in mind do you get what i'm saying and that that may be giving them a little more grace than what is necessary <laughs> you know what i'm saying but i still think that they had they had the understanding that they wanted to give us something just like i want to give my daughter something that they never had before you know what i'm saying so i think the the understanding was there it was just the process of how to get there was lost do you know what i'm saying and they didn't have the access or the ability to learn how to get there do you know what i'm saying and that's what makes us different is that going back into breaking uh breaking financial curses for an example is that now we have the ability to give our children the understanding and the ability to do so like you were stating before however the the thing that i would argue is that are people actually doing so do you understand because i've seen multiple examples of people like selling uh selling prescription drugs or getting into the fentanyl game or uh selling ecstasy at at techno clubs or going to these big uh like the dreamvilles and the 420 concert that just came up for snoop dogg and them and this is the way that they think they can make a substantial amount of capital to send back to who them to live life to the fulfillment right but there's so many legality or so many legal ways to break that generational curse that you can take upon yourself to actually understand and learn like setting up a 401k like uh, understanding how a 401k works like understanding that if you put money you making you making forty thousand dollars a year right or sixty thousand dollars a year but we'll keep it simple you make it forty thousand dollars a year 
you know you shouldn't be living above your expenses of forty thousand dollars a year. If you're only making forty thousand dollars, why are you living above your means of sixty thousand dollars or eighty thousand dollars? You know you're only making forty thousand dollars. So why are you trying to live and and export yourself to a lifestyle that you can't afford? Do you get what I'm saying? And putting that money into areas like the stock market, like white people have been using since 1920. Why are you not learning the stock market? Why are you not learning to set up a IRA or a Roth IRA or putting your money into a uh, a substantial um, return system that white people have been using for years? And you're not taking the time out to understand and learn it and put your money into that posi that position. And well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back Daddy. into how my parents were raised. I'm gonna just say that my parents. No, hold were, it tonight if you don't pull. No, no, my uh, mute your mic. I'm about to. I'm, I got it. I got it. <laughs> but um, my parents were two freaking kids from the hood who got a huge settlement, moved to. Uh, moved to the suburbs. I would say that growing up, I was upper middle class. And um, we, with all that money that they got from the settlement, can, did that help with any, like, my, oh my gosh, they were so much more so like, look at what I have. Look at, look at the new car that I got. Look at all the stuff that I have that they blew through that money that was supposed to last, like, I don't know, up until well it's it's still there i think it's, it's lasted up until like i'm 25 now so i'm gonna say about 26 27 years but the thing is they had so much money but they never they never invested they were more so like oh i'm gonna go down to like my um my family and, and flaunt my wealth or look at this new polo jacket that i got or look at my coach fit or look at my new purse look at all this new stuff instead of investing their money that's something that i would do because now i know what it's like to go from being comfortable to being uncomfortable because my parents didn't set me up to know what it's like in real life yeah so like like i said like a lot of black people, when they get money, they don't know how to just be like, oh, let me put this into the stock market or let me let me do this. Let me do that. I was just talking to my mom about the stock market. And I was like, yeah, I put my money into stocks. And she she's like, oh, I've never been interested in that white people stuff. <laughs> white people? Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's what I'm that's what I'm coming at. That's what? you know what I'm saying. They, they were raised to make it seem like, no, you're supposed to stay poor. That's where that's where you're supposed to be. And right. if you get rich, you make everybody else jealous of you. Right. Like, it's just like, that doesn't make any freaking sense to me. Because I'm like, you have all this money, and my mom and dad never bought their own house. We have a house that's, uh, that's um, it's paid off, but it's not theirs, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Without going into my going into what the settlement is it's not their house and i'm like y'all didn't get y'all y'all didn't take some of like the money that you were working like because they worked so you didn't take any of that money and put it into your own house or your own car or your own self because now this money is running out you're about to be broke and have nothing nothing right that makes absolutely no sense to me. Yeah. Now you're now you out here asking me for twenty dollars, thirty dollars, all this stuff. Where is why didn't you decide that okay, I'm gonna make my own savings so that I can be good for the rest of my life? Now you're looking at me and your children to take care of you. Right. A hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred percent. I I do agree with you, and that. That's one of the things I won't I won't dig too deep into this unless Brick or Nigel had something to say. Uh, I won't dig too deep into this, but I think we've kind of hit the nail on uh, on the margin there. Um, or Nunu for that for that matter. Uh, let me unmute Nunu actually. Um, but I won't I won't dig too deep into that nail. But I think we've all kind of gotten an understanding that there are things that. We as a people, y'all, if, and I put this out to anybody in chat, please share this information. Please um, hit the notification bell. Huh? You said what? 
I'm just mad. The one time I asked my mom how much she made, I got screamed at. It's 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 such a weird situation. You know, the, the biggest two taboos that people fail to um discuss with their children is sex and money. It's so weird that you can't have those conversations with your parents or with other people. It's sex and taboo. I mean, uh sex and money, right? Those are like the two biggest well, those are the two biggest taboos, right? That's what I meant to say was sex and money are the two biggest taboos that you can't have conversations with people. Um, but I think that is something that um, needs to be discussed, needs to be understood, and needs to be uh, put out on Front Street a lot more. And I think everybody, if you're in this chat, if you haven't checked out Earn Your Leisure, I'm not sponsored by them whatsoever. But if you can tell them that I'm over here talking about them, that'd be fucking dope. <laughs> but earn your leisure aka eyl on youtube i watch them habitually um i love those guys but they're they, they pass out financial information that is substantial to the black community right so um we'll we'll move past that because i think we kind of hit the nail on the margin there i will say i'm gonna leave with these two questions and then we'll we'll finish out with the last question and we'll get out of here um the first the last two questions are this is a controversial hot topic. What is your number one pet peeve with our people that needs to be discussed and changed? Right? And then I'll lead into this next one. What is what is something that you feel like really needs to fucking change for our people to actually move in society? Our people tearing each other down. Hold on, whoa, whoa, wait. Brick is finally talking, y'all. Uh, stop. <laughs> I just, I just to What'd you say? What'd you say? Um, our people tearing each other down. That's okay, that's a good one. Insane. That's a good one. Okay. And I was about to say the same thing, like self-hatred. Okay. Okay. Fear. Fear. Fear as in what? You need to unpack that. What what, what do you mean by fear? We are so comfortable, like, like we've been saying, we're so comfortable in our environment that we fear the best for ourselves. We fear to go adventure and make a legacy elsewhere. We're so comfortable in our environment that we don't want nothing more for ourselves i agree okay okay wait what you what you got ignorance is bliss. that is my biggest pet peeve ignorance like is bliss some people they don't they, they don't they don't want to know, know or understand or improve in certain ways mentally emotionally whatever it may be they want to stay in the same patterns they're used to and grown comfortable with but I don't know. Like to me, it's just I see it. Like people just want to, they want to keep doing what they've been doing the past twenty five years, mm. and it's just keeping them in the same place. Now, if they move in, it's different, but ninety percent of the time, they just either stay in there or just regressing, or you know, mm. getting worse. If there's I'll... no improvement, then it's it has to be a waste of time. It has to be a waste of energy. You know, why won't you? And why won't they see that? You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I can I can agree with that. I think my biggest pet peeve is that people act like they don't know. And that's that's kind of like ignorance is bliss. Mine's kind of aligned with yours. Is that people act like they don't fucking know that they're purposely hurting or harming themselves or others. And they don't take the time out to understand what can help them improve. And that's kind of like aligns with what that would be my biggest pet peeve as well. Is that ignorance is bliss. People don't take the time out to actually understand that there are things that you can do to help you label, you know, elevate yourself. You get what I'm saying? But I, I agree with all of y'all. I think those are really good ones. Uh, Lupin said his biggest pet peeve is the black community. <laughs> Attitude, stop the ego, stop the fear, stop the self-hate. And we all kind of around the same thing. I think we, we've all kind of... Uh, attributed to the the, the same um stanza uh my last my last two questions are who should our children be listening to is it celebrities is it scientists is it doctors is it politics who who should who should our kids be paying a close ear to and i will say like for me from a personal perspective i love listening to neil degrasse tyson neil degrasse tyson is a astro physicist that has popular popularized himself in the past like 10 years or so and i love listening to his podcast star talk and 
he just he just breaks down things in a a very general basis that even a third grader can understand what he's talking about and i love listening to him because he gives me insight on things that i I don't listen to but i also love listening to joe rogan i will sit down and listen to a joe rogan podcast for three fucking hours and it's the most um it's the most informational substantial piece of you know of uh content that I can consume and feel like I'm not doing something just because I'm fucking bored. Does that make sense? So just just take that into mindset and then answer when you feel. We need politics because that's everything that's going on around us. We need to be educated on how to survive, how to maneuver, and how we can improve ourselves within the economy that we are in. Mm-hmm. But our that's that's like probably the secondary thing that is the most important. But first thing a kid should always learn from is their parents. I don't want to say mistakes, but their mistakes are how their parents can mold not really mold them, but like everyone I've been saying, set them on the right path of where they messed up, and give them the best pointers as well as educating on educating them as the economy changes. Mm. Whoa. Well, my kid is three, so he's listening to Steve Burns and freaking, uh, freaking, what's the lady name, Miss Rachel, and shit like that. So I don't really have that. I don't have like that thought yet because the things that my mom taught me was basically all religious, and I had to learn things on my own. So I think that as he gets older and he becomes interested in certain stuff, like that's when he's going to want to watch the documentaries or open up, like whenever they're ready to receive the information, that's when I will give the information. That's what I, mm-hmm. that's what I think I'm going to do. I'm not just going to be like, Hey, listen, you need to watch this. Cause this is how life is going. Like if you force it, then he's not going to want to do it. I think when he becomes open-minded and want to, really understand what the hell I'm talking about, he will do that on his own. Mm. What you got to say, Brick? You need that last opinion, bro. Where are you going with this? Um, You said who should your kids listen to? Yeah, yeah. That's the question. I mean, it's, it's really like no right and wrong answer to that. Um, Obviously, you would want your kids to listen, you know, to you, you know, as the parent. But, I mean, as a kid growing up, you know, your kid going to have their own, you know, fucking opinions about shit. So, I mean, it's really up to them to learn from, you know, mistakes and experiences. And, then, you know, mm-hmm. they just learn from that. So Exactly. I feel that. I'm glad nobody says celebrities. That's one of those generational curses that I, I, um... I feel like it's something that needs to be atoned and changed drastically because I think we hold celebrities up to a pedestal that is not substantial for the contributions that they are providing back to society. Rather, if they're black, white, Asian, Hispanic, green, purple, blue, whatever it is, right? I'm so glad that to hear y'all say that celebrities should not be on that platform and I, I, I completely vouch and will stand on the platform here and say that nobody should be holding a celebrity to the substantial amount of being an influencer on how you control and deal with your life on a daily basis. So I take it in a certain way, but I, I think we probably can kind of agree and disagree on what I just said, but... I don't think a celebrity should ever be in that that position. Does that make sense? For sure. Yeah, he's For sure. Lupin said we who should who we should listen to is Neil deGrasse Tyson, black creators like Marquise Brownlee and T Pain. I don't know about T Pain. Oh, Marquise, Marquise Brownlee, Marquise, and we should pay attention to Oprah. Camilla Harris, AOC, and your power players who aren't just sitting back and doing nothing. What is Camilla doing? I'm about to say Camilla Harris ain't really contributing shit. Like I don't know, little Lupin, you lost me right there, bro. Like I don't know. <laughs> Lupin, I was with you all the way up until this point. Like I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. 
Neil deGrasse Tyson is a good one. Uh, T-Pain does have... T-Pain has lost his money and got his money back, so I can kind of see T-Pain to an extent. Oprah, hell no. Uh, Camilla Harris, definitely not. Uh, the LC, uh, okay, I can kind of see. Yeah, oh, okay, Oprah in a business sense, I can kind of see that. And, Op and Camilla Harris for a different reason? Well, you're going to have to elaborate on the reason, brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You want to elaborate on that reason? But what was you? My bad, Cam. Cam, what was you about to say? I wanted to hear what you wanted to say before before I get out of here. Cause we got one more question. Yeah, I know, right? So the last question, uh, for everybody, so we can wrap this up, is uh, where do we go from here? If you had a platform and an opportunity to alter us as a people, where would you start? Where should we? I started in the house. Start in the household. Okay. Ninety said we only go up. That's where we go. Okay, well that doesn't answer my question. Period. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't answer my question at all. Where do we go from here? If you had a platform and an opportunity to alter us as a people, where would you start? I like the household, but but why? Children. Okay, because, but why our children? Because of the, of the uh, children's future. I believe the children are future. Help them, them, help them lead the way. That's so true. That's so true. Like you gotta. That's what chocolate, everybody. Because you gotta build a solid foundation. Huh? Is she talking? She talking. Let her talk. What? No, no. I was just saying that, like, the kids are like, who's gonna be like the next leaders and stuff like that. You gotta start with them because, honestly, as an adult, you have your mindset. Like, yeah, you can change some things and you can like get it together at a certain point, but like, like they're they're already stuck in their ways. If I can get to a child and teach them everything so that they can be a great functioning adult and a great parent and so on and so forth exactly like that I, that's how i think and especially especially like uh teaching more about like just everything i don't know i can't think anymore i'm done with this <laughs> <laughs> it has been three hours so i can understand it has been three hours but if y'all have nothing else to contribute to the conversation uh thank y'all huh what you saying Nuno? Huh? I said I do before we leave. What you got? What you got? Uh, with the contributing and how we can start, you have to start with yourself. Exactly. Like, um, Thank you. Like your friend said, you have to start with yourself. You got to practice it yourself. You got to mm. understand where you're messing up at and try to improve on your end. And once you get to, once you start learning things, you can teach people around you. But first, you have to give yourself that knowledge and open up the opportunity. And like Cam Cam said, I can see why we should extend our hands to kids. But honestly, since they're so young, and things are going to change over time. We have to start with the people that's now, and that's more my generation. Because we are the new adults. So if you yeah. can get through to me, and because you could change, like you said, Cam Cam, you could change any point in your time. Many people go upgrade their life when they hit their 50s, and things will hit off for them until they get old. But they have to teach themselves. Young exactly. babies and stuff like that, the stuff that they're going to learn is not going to matter when they get older, pretty much. Things are mm -hmm. changing drastically to the point where whatever we're concerned about is going to get worse, or it might be something we don't even know of yet that will hit the fan. So with that being said, I think we should focus more on the people that's getting out of high school and influence them, because no matter what they're being influenced to do, we are still the people who are going to change the shit around us. Right. And honestly, I hate to say this, this is the most hateful shit I'm going to say. No, oh, Lord. But honestly, even if we do give certain kids that knowledge, I really feel like the new generation of kids are going to be the worst menaces. Because it seems like the more they're growing up, the more they're exposed to, and the more hope we have for them. We, we've been letting each other down for generations. So mm, I think we have to start with the ones now. Now, I don't agree. <laughs> I don't agree that our kid, that those kids are going to be menaces. And the only reason why I say that is because there's parents like um, Darius and I who are mm -hmm. trying to teach our kids how to actually um, 
deal with their their selves emotionally and all that stuff. There is a lot of parents who are dropping the ball, but there I've seen too many parents who are trying to like figure all this stuff out and uh, raise functioning mm -hmm. people, members of society. Like I I really think that Gen Alpha is probably going to be the generation that really changes a lot because we have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. We are starting to. Um, listen and understand and take it to consideration so then our mm -hmm. kids are going to grow up to be not only emotionally intelligent but just intelligent in general mm -hmm. I, I can see so, that i can i can 100 percent see that but i'm always about some are going to get it and some aren't and even if you are taking the proper steps that matter some kids are they're given everything they have the above average opportunities than other kids do because of their skin color because of financial are just they're just favored and most of them they have the opportunity to still fuck up and you are given all the tools you still fuck up so with that being said like i said i do agree that the newer generation of kids will be uh impactful but like i said you have to focus on the ones who are actually stepping out the world now because we are the one who's going to mold our shit is going to turn out yeah i can so I think I can I can uh, I can attribute to what Nunu is saying, and the 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 thing that I will leave you all with that's also in the chat is that you have to take into the mindset that there's a saying, right? The saying goes, the the son of a warrior, right, grows to be a menace, and once that son becomes a menace, his son becomes a a uh, Oh man, I'm messing up the sand. But his son becomes a posh master. And with that posh master, he becomes a servant. Right? And we can we can really dig into that and basically just understand that the warrior has fought for something to change it into the the master, the posh master turning his son into a person who has taken the advantages and the things that his grandfather fought for right to lead into a greater society and then he fucks it all up caesar is a great example of that if you don't know who caesar is right do your research but mar mar uh, uh, uh caesar basically had the same situation happen to him Caesar was executed and taken out and his son took over, right? And his son basically fucked up Rome and that's why Rome fell. Do you get what I'm saying? So take that into consideration. I think that kind of attributes to what Nunu was stating before. Those are just the things that you have to understand is that you can't give your, you can't give your children everything that you have lost. Little Caesar's feast, shut your ass up, nigga. <laughs> but with that we close out again this uh this this topic was breaking generational curses i do appreciate brick squad sax boy aka nigel uh the arkham knight aka cam cam lady sensei nunu myself and uh we had uh artist mo money aka my sister uh my other sister was in here uh, to attribute to some of these topics i thank y'all so much for being in here and uh just sticking with us and, and giving your opinions when we have these discussions it is a a safe space so we allow y'all to attribute to the to the topic as as much as possible and we we love that you guys uh enjoy these topics and i hope to do some more of this in the future uh if you haven't already be sure to follow the twitch channel subscribe and as well as uh turn on your notification bell so you can be informed about the future um the future um streams as well as share this with somebody and let them know you know we have these discussions over here but i also do uh other content on the side as well and it helps us out tremendously i'm trying to put my uh my boy brick squad on the payroll so we can get this taken off into a further circumstance and i got a few other people that i want to uh to turn this into an actual business i turn this into an llc so i want to take this to the next level and i i any support is more than enough support 
uh in general you say you hit up two ton two ton will have some crazy ass i would love to see two ton talk about some of this shit man but we'll have a different topic the next time we do this uh it'll be a uh a more um i don't know we'll we'll do some brainstorming and see what topic we'll do next next time but i'll be out in japan from the first into the 16th so i won't be streaming as much but i will be doing some vlogging and take some pictures and putting it on instagram and such uh so if you guys want to hit me up while i'm out there uh it would be amazing as hell um and we'll, we'll we'll continue from here when i get back in may we'll do some more uh i don't want to really call this a podcast because it's not necessarily a podcast it's more like a talk show so um any help will be substantial if you want to donate uh to the dojo to help out what i was with what i was stating before oh lord all right this, these white claws are kicking in <laughs> If you want to uh, donate to the dojo so that I can start what I'm starting, it would be greatly appreciated. This is the Discord that we are in, and uh, my socials. I think I Rick, do I got a socials joint? I don't think I got a socials one. But anyway, I appreciate y'all very very well. Uh, you can find me on any social media platform at dari sensei uh on most platforms are forever is my facebook platform uh and it'll be greatly appreciated if you can follow those channels and be notified for future uh for future uh streams um that'll come down the line as we as we continue this uh also please check out the merch as well uh we have a, a whole line of merch dedicated to y'all so this this is all for y'all this is all the uh the money that you supply to me does not go into my pocket it goes to improving uh either the dojo in some form or fashion or it goes to uh paying my my future prospects here like brick squad to handle and take care of the stream so um just keep that in mind when you're when you're purchasing these things but much love to y'all i hope y'all enjoyed the episode and i hope to see you in the next one much love to everybody have a great rest of your weekend and i'll see you when I see you. much love. Bye. Any any last any last takes for anybody? Yeah, what you got, Bert? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> what you got, Nunu? Nunu, you got anything you want to say before we get out of here? I don't have nothing. Okay, Naj, you got anything you want to say before we get out of here? Oh no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. All right. But much love to y'all, and I hope to see you in the next one. How y'all feel about that one? Was that was that was that all right?